All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, today we have a new topic, and we are going to discuss about it. Please share the link with your friends and invite as many as you can. I mean, it doesn't cost you anything, does it? Just share the link, please. I saw an article, and this article written by a Muslim woman. Uh, I will show you the article in front of your eyes here. The article name, it is in the islamicmonthly.com, the website, islamicmonthly.com. Okay, this is this is the address. You see it in the top. Islamicmonthly.com. All right. Now their article is written by a Muslim lady. We mean no insult to anyone. We are here to talk about the article, not about her. According to this article, written by Naima. Uh, Naima B. Robert or Rand. No, actually, the one written by it is Saida. This is her picture, Saida Faruqi. It sounds like, you know, Pakistani, uh, something like that. Anyway, this is not important where she's from. She said, Islamic fiction, not unlike Christian fiction, is a religion genre that spans many different categories. Romance, young adult, mystery, historical, and women fictions. What make a book Islamic fiction is the content, generally offering creative ways to showcase in the Islamic viewpoint, without the graphic or X, etc. You know, because supposedly the Muslims supposedly they are anti-graphic, supposedly they are conservative people. But the fact this is absolutely false. However, I mean, I'm not going to read the article because it, honestly, the article has nothing to do with my topic except what it took my attention when she said the Islamic fiction is not unlike Christian fiction. I mean, how you can have a Christian fiction? We have once a Christian fiction. Allah, he took it and he put it in the Quran. Anyone, anyone remember an example of the Christian fiction Muhammad he stole and he put it in the Quran? Do you remember the story of the seven sleepers? The seven sleepers is a Christian fiction story. Muhammad he put it in the Quran as something real. <laughs> So when the Muslims speak about Islamic fiction and Christian fiction, they are not talking about the Quran, that the Quran is the biggest book of fictions. Isn't the Quran report for us a story of a bunch of guys and supposedly they have their dog with them? If we go to chapter 18, verse number 22, we will find the following. And as you see, guys, I'm just showing you the Islamic translation, which I don't accept. But just take a note, I use Islamic translation to get Muhammad and his followers busted. So they will not say he is using his own translation. Just take a note. Please invite your friends, guys. Uh, the one is talking in this fiction story, supposedly Allah reporting for us about a bunch of guys who disappear, and they are Christians. But this is a story written by a Christian bishop or a priest who is from Syria many hundreds of years, hundreds of years before Muhammad. 
maybe let us say 300 years or to 200 years before Muhammad even exist and the naive Muhammad because he is a thief he took the story he put it in the Quran as a real story and now supposedly the one is talking is Allah and just to show you when a thief he copy a story how the story became a stupid the story by the way is a beautiful story it's a fiction story even some naive Christians believe it's true but it is a fiction story uh, Muhammad he took it he put it in the Quran and he added there you know people they love fictions this is why I say just some naive Christians they think this is a true story uh, the purpose of this story it was to encourage youth who they are suffering from discrimination that we will be victorious and to make the, st the story simple about what happened supposedly there is a there is a bunch of guys and there are seven Christians who they are youth young and they were discriminated by the king of their kingdom uh, for uh, when he when the king he heard that they are became a Christian so he um, like give them a warning either to leave a Christianity or they will be slaughtered so they run and then they seek refuge in a cave and God provide them with the provider that provider is an angel who protected them and then they slept for 300 years and then after 300 years they woke up and they found that their king is gone and the kingdom which used to discriminate them became a Christian kingdom Muhammad he took the story he added to the Quran as if it is a real story but when Muhammad he steal he do some changes to cover the lies he make always and by adding those spices the story became so funny and so stupid and I will give you an example you see I learned since I was a child that people they read the same text I read but I don't, they don't see the same what I see I don't know why honestly I do not know why the same text you give it to someone you give it to me this person he will not see what I'm saying unless I show him what it's saying in this story Muhammad decide to ask his God Allah or let us say Allah himself voluntarily he decide to tell us who are they those people and actually the chapter we are reading from you believe it or not is named by the name of this chapter we have a caller let us see who is the caller hold on hello yes Hello. sister how are you good how are you mister i'm fine uh, uh we are live on air now you said you have a question for me right what is what is the time over there the time now it is in my house it's 4 42 in my neighbor house i think it's 4 43. no what is the country uh, i am in usa right now ah, okay yeah that is why it was always i am in europe hmm? all right so what, what is from, what what is I am from Pakistan. You're welcome, sister. I, I very, spoke. Very, huh? I'm speaking uh, lately with a lot of people from Pakistan, and uh, please carry my love to all Christians from Pakistan. I love them very much. <laughs> no, but I am in uh, Belgium now. All right. In Europe, but I am uh, continually hearing for since uh, long, uh, not very long, about two three months back. Okay. I am hearing your uh, YouTube videos all right about Quran and all that it is a really 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 I have learned a lot though I am from Muslim country but I didn't know so much hmm? uh, I have learned so much now a uh, uh, recently I was listening that they are saying uh, uh, Quran was uh, Muhammad received Quran in the month of uh, Ramadan uh, how come because we learn from our book huh? mm -hmm. 
and then uh, from where they have learned before uh, coming the quran that that they have to fast mm -hmm. eh? so how come because you you have done a great great study about this yeah oh, first of all you see the uh, the muslims they claim that the quran came down in the month of ramadan correct yeah yeah right. but the fact the month of ramadan is not exist and let me explain to you why i don't know if you can see my screen can you see my screen in the broadcast uh, i i can see there is only some debate something tv oh no 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 not not uh, in skype not in skype i will give you the link for uh -huh. youtube so you can watch us there and you can mute the sound there anyway you can watch it later um mm -hmm. You know so you can see what we are talking about i will send you a link later you and can just watch now, it i was listening just now also you yeah. have um, handled with the um, uh, topic of a protestant and uh, yeah let us finish this one let us finish this one sister here and huh? you see when the muslim they say muhammad he received the quran in the month of ramadan yeah. we should uh -huh. know that month of ramadan in the islamic calendar is a very flexible month and i will explain to you simple and easy yeah this is the month of ramadan calendar according to muslims okay in the year 2013 the month of ramadan was in july 9 and in august 7 2014 the ramadan was june 28 and in july 27 in the year 2015 it was june 18 and in july 17 in the year 2017 it was in may 27 and in june 25 in uh, uh, in this year 2018 it is may 16 and in june 24 uh, june 14 in 2019 it is may 6 will end in june 4 to make it simple if we go all the way down to 2032 ramadan will be in december 4 and will end in the 2nd of January 2013. So when the Muslim he says to me that Muhammad he received the month of Ramadan, shouldn't first we know where, what was the month of Ramadan? If the month of Ramadan keep jumping like a monkey, they bend in the year. <laughs> I laugh with you when you laugh. Yeah. And I and I I laugh alone when I hear all these things. Yeah, sister, listen to my idea. Donkey. Listen to my idea. <laughs> when we say when we say like a Christian prince is born in uh, uh, 1871 because I'm very old and in the month of January. All right? Mm -hmm. January is a fixed month. Anyone mm -hmm. can go and check what is January. But when we say Ramadan, as you see Ramadan is movable. Is like a U-Haul truck keep moving from place to place. Mm -hmm. So how we can find out what was the date Muhammad he received the Quran? And this is my challenge to all the Muslims. Who is the Muslim can tell me what was the date the Quran was revealed? Because Muhammad himself is not sure. As an example, the Quran speak about something is called the night of power, the night of uh -huh. power where he receives supposedly his Quran. So Muhammad, when he speak about the night of power, let us go there. Muhammad, he claim that this night is equal to 1,000 night in a prayer. This, this is what he claimed. Now, if we ask the Muslims, which one was the night of power? The Muslims, they will say, Allah knows best. And they start guessing about which night this night is. In mm -hmm. chapter 79, verse number one, even the chapter name is the chapter called Al Qadr. It says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil Qadr, which means we send it in that night. The Muslim they translate it as the night of power. Now, if we go and check in the hadith, you will see Muhammad himself is not sure. N uh, the night of power, sometime Muhammad he claimed it was in the middle of the month, sometime he claimed it was in the 27th of the month. Sometime he claimed it was uh, in the last 10 days of the month. And then Muhammad once, he, he, the angel, he inspired him and he reminded him about the date of the night of power. And Muhammad, he ran to the street to tell his friends. And he keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running until he arrived to his friends. And they said to him, Prophet, why you are you running like this? He said, the angel, he just told me which was the night of the Qadr. 
said, okay, what is the night? He said, I forgot. <laughs> so, no. Islam is a, is a nice comedy, yeah. a stupid comedy. And their uh, their angels are also frightened sometimes from dogs. Yeah, but this is yeah this is not my topic now. We want, let us focus one thing. Okay. When 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 is the month of Ramadan and when Muhammad he received the Quran? Yeah. So the month of Ramadan is not known, and all the Muslims' calendar is mixed up. Like the Muslims, they say to us, Muhammad was born in the year of etc. What is the proof? There's no proof. What yeah. is the reference? Is that mentioned in the Quran? How we can how we can be sure about any date is mentioned in Islamic books? If Muhammad himself is not sure about the date he received his Quran, and this is supposedly mentioned in the Quran, how Allah He says this is the night of power equal to one thousand month, and then nobody knows when this night is. They are just guessing. Every scholar he give you different interpretation, and every scholar he support his idea by hadith from here. And hadith from there so Islam dates are nothing but fictions and it's a stupid calendar it's not exist the month of Ramadan is unknown month Muhammad he copy the name from the Arab before him and the month of Ramadan before Islam it used to be something and today is something else the Muslims when Muhammad supposedly he immigrated he the Muslims Abu Bakr as most of the Muslims agree that Abu Bakr is the one who decided to change the calendar and is starting the Islamic calendar from the date of Muhammad immigration and that changed the calendar so the month of Ramadan is not fixed no more like the same as July or August or etc it became a movable because the Muslims are using the, the, the lunar calendar and the month of Ramadan jump and change from place to place so when the Muslims they speak about the month of Ramadan the challenge is first do you know even when the month of Ramadan was number two do you know when was the night of power number three do even your prophet knows when the night of power because if a Muslim he claimed that he knew when the night of power is that would be funny that he knew but his prophet do not know when the night of power is same time the night of power and this is showing the exaggeration and Muhammad trying to make a rap song have have used this meaning saying that this night is equal to 1000 month which mean if you pray in this night which is where the Quran sent down and by the way the Quran was not sent in one night the Quran sent supposedly in many years so how the Muslims can say they receive they receive the Quran in the month of Ramadan but because the Quran says that we send it in the in Ramadan, but no Muslim knows when in Ramadan, what day in Ramadan, and the Ramadan, is it about sending all the Quran? Some Muslim they say, what happened that Allah He sent the Quran with Jibril, and Jibril He have it in his pocket, and then when the Prophet He need a verse, He give it to him. Some they say no. What was sent in the month of Ramadan, it was only the first chapter, which the chapter it says a read, and the, the, the angel he was squeezing him like a mayonnaise. So <laughs> the Muslims are not sure which what what is this is mean and what this is, is about. However, just to show the lies and the fictions of Muhammad, how we can expose it so easy. When Muhammad he says that the month of Ramadan is equal to 1,000 months, if we go to the calculator. And we say 1,000 month divided to 12. That's mean one night in Islam, this is the night of power, is equal to 83 years of a prayer. Now, what is fair and how stupid that can be? If you pray in this night, is the same as you pray for 83 years. So let us say, I am a person who converted to Islam today. I did not pray at all and then I prayed at that night Allah will put in my credit what is equal a credit of a prayer of 83 years and a three month how stupid that is and what is fair about it and what is special about this night this night is exists for Allah or it's exists in the earth because if Allah is in heaven he is out of time so what is special about this night and why if the believers pray in it they will get the thousand month 
equal to pray and why Allah did not tell us which night it is so all of this is fictions in the same time my, my, my dear sister the month of Ramadan is not the month of fasting if we go right now and search in Google we will find that the month of Ramadan is the month where Muslims they gain weight and they get so fat and the price of food skyrocketing and go crazy because Muslims are not fasting the Muslims are eating a lot more if we go right now and search uh, price of food in Ramadan this is all what only, I'm going to search for only, and then you will find only in the Muslim countries no yeah, because yeah because uh, I mean for sure because they are they are the majority and that will impact the price mm -hmm. of food but in a in a non-muslim country the muslim cannot make an impact so why you know if you search right now uh, uh why the price of food in the month of ramadan go crazy there is no answer except that muslims are eating like crazy that's all i mean there is no reason if people are fasting if everybody stop buying gas the gas of the price will drop to be zero because nobody is buying it the price of gold will increase if people buying gold the price of any stock market any stock Apple anything when there's high demand then the price go high when people they start stopping selling buying and even they are selling but nobody is buying the price drop dramatically so you will see here that the in all Islamic countries food prices go so crazy for very simple reason muslims don't fast month of ramadan is the month of watching porn eating as much as they can having nothing to do in life except eating and sleeping they sleep in the daytime they wake up all night and they watch tv and they invite their friends and they do hashish and shish kebab this is not the month of fasting. Muhammad, he was trying uh, uh, to copy the Christians and the Jews and the Sabian. Everybody have a fasting month. So what I will do, I need to have a fasting month. Otherwise, people, they will laugh at me. What kind of religion it does not have a fasting month? So Muhammad, in the beginning, he starts fasting, the Jewish fasting. And then Muhammad, when he come, you know, if we go right now and search, in the hadith as an example Muhammad used to fast what is called the fast of David Muhammad used to fast what is called the fast of uh, 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 Ashura okay why Muhammad is fasting Ashura let us see You will see even the Muslim themselves, they have different opinion why Muhammad is fasting Ashura. He heard Ibn Abbas when he asked about the fast of Ashura saying, I do not know that the Prophet fasted any days because it is uh, uh, except the day, meaning except the month of Ramadan and the day of Ashura. Okay, what is the day of Ashura? According to Muhammad, if you fast Ashura, Allah will forgive your, 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 you know, your past and your coming sin. The Prophet said, whoever wish may fast on the day of Ashura, but this is later. Later, Muhammad, he changed his mind. In the beginning, Ashura was so important. Here we will find a different story. Uh, let me show you. Uh, uh, okay, here we go. Look what Muhammad said. The Messenger of Allah, P-B-U-H-B-M-W, Mercedes-Benz, was asked about observing as so a psalm, which means the, the fasting. On the 10th of Muharram, this is the day of Ashura. Then, and, and he replied, it is an exhibition for the sin of the preceding year. So one day of Ashura is enough to destroy all the sin of the past year. All right. Yeah. So why now, why it is not important no more and why Muslims don't fast it? Imagine one day, will kill all your sin for the past year so what happened ashura is not important no more yes because muhammad he come with a new idea he learned from the sabian about fasting for 30 days so he decided to exchange ashura with a new fasting 
and suddenly Ramadan became the month of fasting. We read here in this hadith in Sahih Muslim, Abu Abdul Rahman saying, In the day of Ashura, and, and you are eating, all right? A guy he came to him and he said, It's day today is the day of Ashura, and you are eating. What's wrong with you? Upon mm -hmm. this, he said, Fast was observed in the day before fasting in Ramadan was more was made uh, 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 like obligatory but when it was made like this the fasting of the ashura was abundant so the muslims they were fasting ashura as the most important day and then muhammad when he come with the idea of ramadan suddenly ramadan became the important question was mm -hmm. muhammad aware that ramadan is more important than ashura the answer no for a very simple reason, Muhammad is a copy paste thief. First, he found Ashura. The story says actually, Muhammad he went to a, to a Jewish uh, 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 community, and he found them fasting. He said, "Why you are fasting?" They said, "We are fasting, fasting uh, uh, the the, the uh, Musa is crossing the sea. It's a day where Musa is across the sea, and he was saved the Jews from uh, from the Pharaoh." So Muhammad he said, "You know what? We are more close to Musa than you." And he ordered his followers to fast that day. Then when Muhammad, he came with better ideas, suddenly Ramadan is more important and Ashura is thrown in the garbage. And this is additional proof that Muhammad is a false prophet because where Muhammad, he got the information that one, one day of Ashura fasting is equal to demolish all your sin for the last year. Did Allah told him that? If Allah told him that, where Allah, he told him it is not accepted no more. And where Allah told him is not important, nowhere. So Muhammad, obviously, he is trying his best to find a fasting, start copying from the Jews, and then he copied from the Sabi. And this is why the Hadith says that he was called the Sabian. So Ramadan is not the month of fasting for the Muslim. Ramadan is a month was copied from other people who they are the Sabian. This is why the Muslims. When they witness for the month of Ramadan, they, 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 they do eye sighting. They are not witnessing for a month. They are witnessing for the moon. You see, the Muslims, because today they are disconnected and they do not speak the language uh, correctly, the word shahar in Arabic does not mean month. Today is used as a word mean month. It's the same, you know, that in the language, language is changed. Like in the uh, not long time ago, in the time of Shakespeare, a person who is a gay, it means he is happy. It does not mean that he is a homosexual. The word shahar in, in the Aramaic language, this is Aramaic word, have nothing to do with the Arabic. Most of the, Ara most of the Arabic is really Aramaic. Shahar Ramadan is not the month of Ramadan as the Muslims translate. It was the moon of Ramadan. This is why it says, whoever of you, I sighting the moon of Ramadan, the crescent moon of Ramadan, <coughs> then he should fast it. So it is not a month, it was a moon, and whoever of you sight that 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 crescent moon, read me carefully, guys. Do you see it? This is the Muslim translation, not my translation. So whoever mm -hmm. of you sight the crescent on the first night. Here they add the word month. The fact doesn't say month. It says the word the, the word shahar exactly mean uh, 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 the moon. And the reason it says the moon, because remember, Muhammad, he follow the Jewish calendar. In other way, he is following the lunar calendar. Muhammad, he copied from the Jews, but already the pagan Arab, they are doing the, the lunar calendar because this is, was the most popular calendar in their territory. So Muhammad, when he was talking about, when he added the month, or let us say Ramadan, as a part of his religion, he did not speak about the 30 days we speak about today. He spoke about what the Sabian believe. The Sabian believe that the moon of Ramadan appear in a city in North Iraq, north of Iraq. Then they move after 30 days and they receive the new moon in a different city so they believe it's a new moon so this is the this is the the moon of ramadan is going to disappear and is going to come back as a new moon with a new look for, in different city muhammad he copied that from them this is why it is speaking about eye sighting for the moon the question is if the muslims are not pagan 
and they are not worshiping the moon of God or the, the moon God why it is by sighting the moon they start fasting and why by sighting the moon they stop fasting simply because this is something coming from the pagan the Sabian who Muhammad promised them to go to heaven when he said that the Jews the Christian and the Sabian they will go to heaven and they have nothing to worry about when we ask the Muslims why the Sabian they will go to heaven nobody have an answer simply because Muhammad at that time he was being a hypocrite to everybody he want to make everybody relax I am a prophet for everybody the Jews Christians even if you are a Hindu or a Buddha even if you worship rocks and stores you kiss black stone I kiss it you kiss a cheese I kiss it and I say cheese with you so Muhammad the hypocrite man it doesn't matter what you worship he follow your step and here he is following the step of the Sabian so he decided to accept what the Sabian practice this is why you see the evolution the Muslims they do is a Sabian practice you can go right now and search in YouTube you will find how the Sabian do evolution it's exactly how the Muslims today and then you will find that the Sabian they have the crescent moon and they they celebrate what it's called the month of Ramadan and even he took the prayers the five prayers from the Sabian remember the Quran speak about three prayers and then Muhammad he switched to five prayer why because this is exactly what the Sabian they practice so all of this is shaped by the Sabian based on the crescent moon based on that uh, 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 there is there is there is a moon will come and that is the moon of Ramadan which Allah he sent to us this is the moon of Ramadan this is not the month of Ramadan and they in the same time to, to prove that uh, uh, this is what the Quran is saying uh, you you will see that Allah he's he, he confirmed that the year for in uh, for Allah is 12 moon Let us see hold on It is 12 moon not 12 month as the Muslims they translate The year or uh, the year for the calendar of Allah is a 12 moon. Let us see All right, let us see here. All right The number of the months of for Allah is a 12 month. This is the Muslim translation. The fact it is not 12 month. It is a 12 moon. This is a chapter 9 verse number 36. The Muslims the eyesight 12 moon they don't eyesight 12 month. Nobody can sight time. Time is not to be sighted because it is not real. So here in chapter 9 verse number 36 Allah himself confirmed that he have a 12 moon and those moons are going to visit you The number of the month as the Muslim translate in the sight of Allah what sight of Allah the, the numbers of the moons in the sight of Allah because Allah he sighted them is a 12 moon So Islam all of it is base and the funny Muhammad he speak about the Arab as pagan when he is a pagan and he did exactly all what the Arab do the Arab before Islam go around the Kaaba Muhammad go after Islam around the Kaaba the Arab kiss the black stone Muhammad kiss the black stone the Arab they worship the three daughters of Allah and Muhammad he did in his lifetime even after he claimed to be a prophet he worshiped the three daughters of Allah as it's known the satanic verses so there is a wrong conception or understanding about Ramadan People they think it is a month. Ramadan is a moon. I hope I did answer you, sister. Yeah, thank you very much. All May right. I ask you something? Sure. Um, uh, are you well protected and your family? Oh, don't worry. I have a plastic gun in my house. <laughs> plastic. Yeah. No, because because uh, whoever will speak about Islam or about uh, Muslims. They are not saved. I don't know about their don't worry, in, my, uh, my dear my sister. Country, my dear sister, don't uh, worry. Recently, one man has died in the prison because he was put uh, due to this. He said something about Islam or what? I say every, every day about Islam, and the one who have courage to come to me, let him come. 
I have bacon, I have pork around my house. They don't dare even to get the clothes. I'm protected by the pigs, mashallah. So thank you, sister. <laughs> thank you, sister, for, for calling thank me. You. I have to go back to my and topic. Your, your family, all they are with you here? I, I don't talk about my private life, but let me tell you, I have four wives and four mother-in-law, but all of them, I send them to vacation, you know? They are not here, no. <laughs> no, no, just, uh, I, I know, I respect all these things but just uh, it was my fear a little bit no, i have no fear from anyone if i have a fear i will i will never open my mouth trust good. me may god bless you i pray for you every day i am i am a religious sister eh? All right. <laughs> you are talking about a catholic and i was laughing i said uh, look i am i am a nun sister okay yeah i i know actually i saw your picture you are uh, you are a catholic nun i am happy that yeah. you call me and i uh, really appreciate you and i love all you so said for us, we as a Christian, we should love each other. I am, I am not, a, I am not a Catholic. I'm not a Catholic. But yeah, I, we know we need to be united against the devil, and we yeah. love each other. And we have one Lord. We have one Master. We have one Teacher. His name is the Messiah, and we yeah. are protected by Him. If people try to kill us, or they succeed to kill us, they kill not, nothing because this is the flesh is going to die anyway. I am, no. I am a living person by the messiah and by his power nobody can take me and nobody can get away with me he can kill the body that's what the bible says they can give you poison they can kill you but still you will live whoever believe in me and die the messiah said he will live and we have the promise of the most powerful person on this earth he is the mm -hmm. almighty god so don't fear that the, the evil don't fear their violence their violence is a proof that they are corrupt and they are false a person mm -hmm. who have the true God, he will not need to kill somebody to convince me that his God is peace. That yeah. is a stupid idea. Thank you, sister, for calling. And I, uh, uh, with my uh, respect, Prince, and, and uh, my sister. Really, uh, uh, clear my vision. Huh? Thank yeah. you very much. If you, want, if you want to invite me to your church, and I understand you are from the Catholic Church, I will be happy to come, and I do my service for free. All right? I am here in uh, Belgium, in yeah. Europe. Yeah. And, uh, OK. Yeah. Please. Anyway, I'm just kidding. I'm telling you, if you if ever you you need me to come to your church, I will be happy to come, and it is for free. I will pay even for my sandwich, because I eat a lot. <laughs> you know, my sandwich is so yeah, big. You know, my sandwich food. like. A, and the other day thank I took you. a van. Yeah. All Thanks right. A lot. All right, sister. Take care. God bless you. God bless you. Take care. Bye bye. Yeah, she is a she is a Catholic nun, and she is a wonderful sister. I'm glad that I answered her question. By the way, guys. I say always I will pay for my sandwich because my sandwich is so huge. You know, once I was like in the beach and I was holding my sandwich and the other side of the sandwich is in the truck. Hello? Oh, uh, hello, brother. Can you hear me? Hey, my friend. How are you? We are live on um, air. We are live yes, on Yes, yeah. I, I know. Uh, yeah. As you know, I, I uh, went to bed an hour ago, but after 10 minutes, I wasn't tired anymore. Yes, it's all right. All good. Nights. How are you doing? Everything is good. Yes, yes. Um, uh, I had a question. Uh, sure. Regarding the night of power, but um, in your conversation with that with that uh, lovely sister uh, you had, it was basically uh, ruined because my question was: uh, Is the night of power still uh, of importance for the Muslims? But then, as you answered her, um, no one knows. Right, no, it was forgotten the date of the night of power, right? Yeah, you know, uh, I mean, you know, this is a religion, it's funny, and there is nothing about it is to take for granted. I mean, yeah. Muslims have no answer, <laughs> Allah knows best. And when always, you know, as always, <laughs> you see, yesterday we were reading, somebody was translating to me a French uh, review of my French book. And mm -hmm. the Muslim in the review, he said that Christian Prince, when he translated the word Makkar, he did not give really the correct translation because nobody can get the correct translation of the Quran. Oh, what <laughs> the heck? So how in the world do you want to convince somebody he is from France or from England or from whatever to convert to a religion? Nobody can translate what the Quran is about. That's mean Islam fail again because it is not. Yeah, able to be translated you have to be an Arab then you might actually and if we, I if, if we are an Arab if we are an Arab and we understand the Quran because we are Arab 
then we have why we have tons of thousands of interpretation for the Quran in Arabic for the Arab. Yes, it's a it's a uh, religion from an Arab man made for the Arab man, basically. Yeah. So you know yeah. there is there is no uh, Islam is just uh, you know yeah. it, it is a collection a collection of fairy tale stories, and Muslims are disconnected with their religion because uh, nothing was written in the time of Muhammad, obviously. Uh, they don't have any authentic you see when the Muslim they say authentic hadith what is the authentic hadith they say to you uh, the books of authentic are six books which is uh, starting from Sahih al-Bukhari Sahih Muslim at Turmudi etc but if we go we will not even find any book made by Sahih al-Bukhari which means if I say to a Muslim right now can you show me the original copy of Sahih al-Bukhari they don't have it so what is authentic about something is not authentic how I can be sure that this is written in Sahih al-Bukhari when we when we don't have a book it's called Sahih al-Bukhari mm -hmm. how we can be sure that this is written in the book of Sahih Muslim when we don't have a book it's called Sahih Muslim and this is why the Shia they make fun of the Sunni and they say to them you are a bunch of stupid monkeys you believe in a banana but you never saw a banana did you mm -hmm. see the banana the Muslim Sunni, he say, no, I did not see the banana. So how you know that the banana was exist if there is if you never saw the banana, and right now you don't have any even a picture or a snapshot of the banana. So what the Muslims they have today is somebody claim that he copy his book from Sahih al Bukhari. So you don't have Sahih al Bukhari because now I can make a book claiming that I copy from Sahih al Bukhari, but I never. And by the way. If he copy his book from Sahih al-Bukhari, where is the book he copied from? Why I need a copy of Sahih al-Bukhari if he himself copied from Sahih al-Bukhari? Yeah, it's just like uh, with the Quran itself. It's the ninth recitation in the uh, in entire line and if it's up to halves. And whose halves are fabricated of hadith, uh, as the Muslims say, and yet they accept it and it's just, yeah, no originals. It's just a line of recitation and recitation and yeah it's basically nothing it's basically nothing so how can they even trust this garbage book but we know we have we have to be honest Islam is a fantastic religion if you are a person who is bored and you want to fly in the top of a broom and this is what we will talk about today when we speak yeah. about the gadget of Allah you see I started the talking about the gadget but we could not get a chance because we are receiving phone calls one after oh. one do you have any more question my brother uh, no, it was the, yes, okay, okay, uh, regarding the Knight of Power, so uh, just to be sure, uh, there is no modern day equivalent of the Knight of Power of which Muslims know that they can pray in this night and the, uh, the worth of their prayers is maximized, they basically have nothing like that anymore. My friend, my work. friend, my friend, first of all, any calendar in the world is a wrong calendar. It doesn't matter what calendar it is because let us say you are born in January 1st, 1981. Uh, I or, know that explanation from your first book. Yeah, so you have you have my book already. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. so, so the, even uh, like when somebody he celebrates his birthday, you know, this year, he's fooling himself. There's no birthday. This is not your birthday because every, every three years we have a lap year. So yeah. how your birthday is going to be today? It is just a, let us say it's a metaphorical birthday. First of all, time cannot be repeated. Mm -hmm. It's gone. It's one time deal. You cannot re repeat time. Secondly, the calendar you are following is not perfect, which means you are you 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 need to add a few days every few years to your calendar in order to be in the same day of your birthday. But nobody do that. People they celebrate their birthday based on what is written in their ID or passport. But this mm. is very wrong because this is a day which is wrong date for the calendar is not perfect and you need to add the lap year day and then you can correct your calendar and then you can celebrate your birthday. Yes. However, mm. in the case of Islam is more horrible. Why? Because the month of Ramadan itself is like a monkey jump from branch to branch. Sometime it's in August, sometime in January, sometime it is, uh, you know, in in a. a, a July, it is it the the band? Yeah. So yeah, that uh, that actually reminds me uh, of uh, um, of the birthday of uh, Muhammad because I remember uh, seeing some uh, 
some news report on TV about Muslims celebrating his birthday in, in, uh, in Spain. And uh, then I did some research and found out, okay, Mohammed's birth month is one of those moon months. And with this, uh, yes, it's always different. And uh, I couldn't find uh, equivalent of his birthday in our calendar because it, because it was just so confusing. And well, yes. My, okay. my friend, the Muslim, they say to us that we Christian we celebrate a Christmas, but Jesus was not born in a Christmas day. We don't celebrate the day of the birth of Christ in the Christmas. We celebrate, <laughs> we celebrate. This there's no because the date, the date cannot be repeated anyway. When we celebrate the Easter, we are not celebrating really the day of the Easter because that day cannot be repeated, but we are support we are celebrating the occasion to remember what Jesus did for us. So when the Muslim they say Oh, you know what? That the, the 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 Christmas day used to be, the the pagans used to worship the sun, and now the Christians they copy that date. That is false because simply we are not celebrating the pagan occasion. We are celebrating our only light and sun. Jesus said, "I am the light of this world," and He Amen. is our light. So the pagan people they replace the pagan god, the sun by the true God, the light of the world, the Messiah. So we are celebrating no date. We are celebrating an occasion only. And our God, he don't mind that we celebrate a Christmas every day. For the Bible teach us that he is the good news. And this is what the name of our gospel. So every day we have good news and his name is the good news for us. So the Messiah, he encourages you to celebrate Christmas every day because he wants us to be a happy people, happy nation, not like the Muslims who they are angry and full of hate and they end sleeping in their bed and they are angry from everything around them. Jesus, Amen, he wants people to be happy. This is why when somebody says to me, oh, Christmas come with the Santa Claus. Well, Santa Claus is someone real. He's not fake. He is a real person. Yeah. He's a good man. Yeah. Yes, I know. I know. We call him Saint Nicholas here in yeah. Germany. He is a good man. He's not a fiction story. However, know, like the I'm story, sure all about yeah, that. like you know, people they say that the children that he came from the chimney. It, there's no problem with that because here the purpose is not you are making a lie. The purpose is making making a child who don't understand anything in life happy. They make him happy. Happiness is good. But here you are not giving him a false, false ideology. Uh, uh, you are just making a child happy. So uh, uh, Santa Claus is not a pagan thing. Someone will say to you, he is a conservative Christian. He says, don't you know that the Bible speak about decorating tree? My friend, don't be an idiot. Decorating tree in the Bible, it was about decorating tree and worshiping the tree. That's what they used to do. We, when we decorate a tree, we are not worshiping any tree. It's just yes, something I'm beautiful. As simple yes. as that, but people they are you know sometimes they are crazy and they are the same as Taliban. We yeah. are not Taliban, yes. we are the I, people I of Christ. He uh, gave I us know. the gift. Yes, yes, brother. Sorry to interrupt you. I I know what you mean because uh, every day, every year in December, I have to defend Christmas in front of other Christians. That's so frustrating. And all I say is bring them to the me, bring them to me, bring them to me, and let us see how they can how they can uh, you know. Because yeah. there is a huge difference between worshiping a tree and decorating a tree for fun. God mm -hmm. is not against you to be happy. God yes, is not I, against I, you to I've wear. Even had, I've even had arguments by other Christians about pictures in, uh, and I don't mean uh, yeah, like what others say, uh, pictures of saints or something. Not that I have a problem with that as long as you don't worship it. Uh, they say art in general, like in Islam, you can draw a living thing, thing like a picture of a donkey or. Of, of something what do i know a dinosaur something you can't draw anything and uh, this is stupid how do you want them look like you can't even no. draw a picture of a tree you and see no the, the bible speak about not to draw pictures or images to worship yes exactly. not about that's drawing true. things that's false uh yeah. because god when he gave musas the tablet what he did the, yes, the uh, tablet the, uh, of musas he draw right he draw because because yeah. because words are images Mm -hmm. Letters are images. Letters are not exist unless we make an image. What does that mean? I mean, you you store in my brain an image of a letter, and then when I connect those letters together, I get into image. So when you put for me the word chair as an example, so I write the word chair. The word chair. When I connect it together, I just wrote an image, not a word. Really, words are images. 
This is why you see Jesus when he speak to his disciple he speak about the parables which mean he speak about images and those images come into words and became a story so this is not a story to worship when Jesus mm -hmm. he said the master and his servants he is not talking about a master who is from real life he is using a metaphorical statement about God that is an image yeah and the servants here is not about a bunch of slaves who they are captured for reality it's about me and you and yeah. that is an image so a, a, a image is a very very important part of the Bible because everything Jesus gave us most especially the parables are images so drawing images is not wrong as long you are not a drawing image to worship yes that's what I always say and uh... Uh, just to add on that, uh, I think it's kind of sad because the Bible is so clear and uh, everyone can basically understand it if if he just reads it uh, properly and uh, to run into Christians saying not only worship is taboo but also that it's uh, not allowed to draw in general. It's a sad conclusion because in Islam, is it's like that in Islam, right? You can't draw pictures of a living thing like a donkey, right? Yeah, you see the yeah. problem. The problem with people is not about reading. The problem is about they. They. they you know, there is a re reading when you read. Uh, simply, you are. You, uh, uh, there is two ways of reading. There is a person who read and observe, and there is a person who just pronounce words. The person who is reading for real is the one who is observing and thinking deeply about the words. The person who just read the outside. And he tried to make a statement out of it he is just an ignorant man as an example the bible says that G jesus is the son of man it's repeated many times but all mm -hmm. of us we knew that jesus is a son of no man so how jesus can be the son of man and he is a son of no man simply because this is not what it's meant that he is a son of man by birth it means something else so if we are naive ones we take things in a literate way and then we say okay Jesus said he is son of man. Obviously, this is a contradiction for the Bible because Jesus, he is himself saying he is son of man. So he just admitted that he is born by a sexual relationship. But this is not what Jesus means. So in order to understand what the Messiah is saying in his book, then we need to observe and to think deeply and not to be the same as a goat who eat the grass and swallow it regardless if it's chewing or not because later she is going to reach it again some people mm -hmm. they are like the same as the goat they just swallow oh absolutely yeah true. chew what they okay. what you what you eat try to taste the food and enjoy it and this is how it is you need to do when you read anything otherwise mm -hmm. you will not get the meaning of it yes that's what i also always say because uh, you basically said what I wanted to say now, but uh, a man from my family I knew once said uh, words can be either dead or alive. If you observe and study and look at them properly, these words are alive and you can learn and understand, but if you just look over them and read it once, then these are dead words, they have no meaning to you and you don't understand anything after all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, brother, that would be for now. I. Uh, I had something else to say, but this is mostly private stuff. Uh, better we do it outside of the show because no problem, no problem. Uh, you you might probably know uh, <laughs> no problem. what I mean. Oh, all right, my friend. Okay, brother. Thank uh, you very much for calling. All right, all right. God bless you and uh, and, and, and everyone else uh, watching this uh, who is German. Uh, das neue Buch ist uh, jetzt raus. Man kann es bestellen. Uh, dürft bald bei Amazon aufgestockt sein, also bitte kaufen und eine, bitte eine ehrliche Wertung reinmachen, nicht wie die Moslems und dann auch eine ehrliche Wertung reinmachen, okay? Und uh, das Buch ist das Geld absolut wert, ich habe es auch auf Englisch gehabt, genauso toll wie das erste, wenn nicht sogar besser. Ne? All right, I did some uh, promotion. Thank you, thank you, my friend. I, I will translate for them what you said, because nobody speak German except me and you here. All right. No one else? Oh, uh, I'm just joking. Okay. Come on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. All right, brother. God bless you and uh, have a nice evening. All right. Take care. God bless. Bye bye. God bless. Bye bye. Yeah, by the way, I speak all languages. I mean, pff, unbelievable how many languages I know. As an example, there's languages you never heard of them. All of them, I speak them.
but if you heard of it I don't know it this is exactly what Muhammad do Muhammad he claimed that he is the person who knows what you know not and the more Muhammad he talk the more he do poo poo this guy is a poo poo man he is a poo poo man the more he speak the more he do poo poo now our topic today supposedly is about the kajit of Allah I put in the screen uh, an iPad the reason I did because maybe many of you do not know that Allah have a tablet you see people they read things but nobody want to think deeply and we just mentioned that if I say that I am God and I have a tablet where I write my things in it shouldn't I ask the very simple question why God need a tablet you see if you give me your phone number I need to store it somewhere either in a paper or if I have a phone you know like this is the new uh, 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 high-tech technology you do not need to use a pen you just store it in the memory of your phone but before people they used to write things in order to store things for memorizing because a human being is short in memory God when he gave the tablet he gave it to Moses not to himself for the one who have a short memory that is Moses he is the human not God God do not need a tablet for himself but the Muslims believe and the Quran confirm that that Allah he have a tablet and Allah he created the first thing he created actually it was a pen if we go in the Quran in the hadith see Um, here we go what is the first thing Allah created Allah starting by creating his kajit do you believe it or not Muhammad he said the message of Allah saying verily the first of what Allah created was the pen was the pen and then Allah he said to the pen write so it wrote what a what will be forever <laughs> I don't know how convincing this is story for you Abdul but for me the story here is kind of funny and stupid first of all there is a few questions we need to ask what is the need of Allah for a pen remember the Muslims they say if Allah wanted something to happen he say B is going to be I'm just trying to teach you how to analyze information and this is you can do to anything in your life if Allah is the person who say B and is going to be then if Allah want to write a book he can say write a book and the book will be there are, are we guys following are we following and this is why I say to you that when Muslims they read their stuff they don't see what I see because they don't think deeply if I am the God and the Muslims they call me the Almighty and the Quran confirmed that Allah if he wants something to be he say be okay be book what is the need of be pen and AK pen he go and write and the pen will write I mean this is what is that can't he say be book and the book will be there 
So obviously here the story is kind of funny and stupid. Same time. Do you see anything missing here, guys? Let us see who is here uh, is a person who have a, a very high IQ. I know all of you are very high in IQ, you know, but uh, we have a dog. Do you hear the dog? Unbelievable. Let me close the window because Allah will run away now if the dog is keep. Uh, hold on. <coughs> There is there is two dogs. One is saying hello, and the other one has saying saying how you doing. Don't tell me how I understand the language, because Muhammad the grandfather, his last name is Dog. Yep, you believe it or not, but yet he hates dogs to death. Now listen, what is missing in this story? Who want to help me? Allah Kafir, he said the ink. What else? Let us say the pen have ink already. What else? No paper. Allah created the pen to write. Write in what? Because remember, this is the first thing He created. There's nothing yet. Allah created the pen. And right away, He told him, write, write where? And this is what? This is why. Everything in this stupid religion is a crazy. Maybe Allah was asking Mr. Penn or Mr. Bean to write a, a tattoo in his skin. Any Muslim can tell me where the pen was writing? Maybe it was a tattoo pen? Where he's writing? And what, what do you mean write? And he write everything. Shouldn't you tell him to write what? I mean, I just say to the pen, write, and I leave the pen, write whatever he wish. Is that a Harry Potter or a pen? Brother, look at the pen. is writing by itself. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. So super powerful pen. Look at this pen. Move by itself and write by itself. Shouldn't I say to the pen what to write? He just said to him, write. He did not even say anything. Why people don't want to use their brain? I mean, if you have one, for God's sake, oh, sorry, for Allah, leg sake, use your brain. In case you do not know, by the way, I'm not making fun of Allah. Allah is a leg. Allah, His Majesty, is a leg. The Muslims, the funny, they say to us, you worship a man, but their God have five fingers, their God have a foot, their God have an ass, their God have two eyes, I'm so glad not four, and their God, he have ears, and he have a mouth, and he have a tongue, and, uh, you know, he have a shin, which is a very beautiful shin. If you watch the Muslim video, the sheikh, he described the shin of Allah, saying, and then Allah will show his beautiful, magnificent shin. Wow. His what? Magnificent shin. What the heck is that? The shin of Allah. We are going to see the shin of Allah. Maybe the pen was writing something on the shin of Allah. Do we have any Muslim in the bushes? Do we have any Abdul in the bushes? So, for those who believe in high tech and technology and they think, that American are the first one or whatever Japanese or German I don't care who is the one first one came with the smartphones or whatever you are mistaken my friend the first one who come with it it was Allah himself what's wrong with my microphone Allah have an iPad we did not arrive to the iPad now. First, we, we spoke about the pen. We spoke about the pen. But let us go now to the iPad of Allah. 
the Quran report that Allah he wrote everything in the protected tablet I mean this is very important to have a protected tablet you know there's a hackers I mean imagine you are God and then we can leak they got what you ever have there you don't want that imagine those crazy hackers from WikiLeaks they WikiLeaks for us what is written in the tablet of Allah that will be a very horrible news for Allah Allah will lose the election and Trump will win again don't do that you better be smart and you better be careful so if we go in the Quran we will find this chapter 85 verse number 22 we can read a few verses before it and a few verses after it so the muslim they will not say ah he is uh, you know he is misquoting and we can go to the interpretation because simply this is what it says all right the quran confirm that nay it is a glorious Quran on a guarded tablet. Question Why Allah He need Quran to be written for His own in a guarded tablet? Another question How here the Quran confirm that this is the Quran? Sorry, I mean Allah is confirming that what is in the guarded tablet is the Quran when Muhammad in the hadith he just told us that Allah told him to write everything which means everything will happen in this earth everything will happen in the world Allah simply when the Muslims speak like this they are talking that Allah he wrote the destiny simply this is a belief pagan belief that destiny is written by the pen of God in his tablet and you cannot change it now some of uh, some of even Christians they believe in the destiny in a very wrong way you see there is there is destiny can be uh, God is involved in it like as an example if God had chose me to be a prophet God forbid that is you know and then I accept but even that destiny I can reject it you know I can reject you accept to serve God or not you are free you can be a criminal you can be a killer you can be a thief you can be a child molester like Muhammad so we don't believe in a destiny as it's something preset for us but we believe that God he can make things happen for a reason and prepare for things to happen for us as an example we have a destiny which we cannot discuss about it for a very simple reason because it is written as a destiny which is we're going with we are going to die that is a destiny as a curse as a penalty not as a destiny as a fate that God before he created us he decided that we will die that was a reaction for an action which means it was not really a destiny the way people understand it it was a penalty for a sin we did otherwise God actually don't want us to die but we choose death over life this is why he gave us a chance to survive again by accepting the Messiah so the destiny in Islam is totally different you know let us say different word if you remember Muhammad he said let us go and open some Hadith, hold on. Okay, let's go here. Sunnah.com. All right. If we go here, don't forget, guys, to subscribe. And if you are already subscribing, don't forget to unsubscribe because that will make Allah happy. All right. Yeah, don't forget, please. I don't know what's wrong with my keyboard. Look, it's typing weird. What is that? I type the word 
what's wrong with this Arabic something wrong with my keyboard you see I type the letter Y come with P I need to check it out all right a child who die and Aisha she went with Muhammad uh, to the funeral and Aisha she said to Muhammad I said Allah messenger there is happiness there is what happiness for uh, this child okay why there is a happiness according to Aisha Aisha she is using a normal logic all of us will use there is a happiness for this child who is a bird from par from the paradise from the birds of paradise for it committed no sin nor has reached the age when one can commit sin so Aisha actually here she is being a Christian how we know that because Jesus said if you don't become the same as those little ones you will en not enter the kingdom of my father so one of the requirements for us to be with God is to be decent children's children they commit sin by the way but their sin is not really they are not aware and that's why their sin is let us say it's, it's not to be judged for for they are just children's they are not aware a child you put in the front of him some dirt he grab it and he eat it so it's a bird of paradise for it committed no sin nor has reached the age when one can commit sin he said Aisha bear adventure it might it may be the otherwise because Allah created for paradise those who are fit for it while yet they were yet in their father backbones and he created for the hell those who are to go to hell he created them for hell while they were in their father backbones so Muhammad is confirming to us that in the religion of Islam there is no justice and the reason for you to go to heaven or to hell is not your sin it is not a sin you committed it is a decision Allah he made when he wrote your fate by his pen he wrote And this is why we need to understand in a very simple way, it's so clear in front of us, that Islam is a stupid religion, full of contradiction. Because the Quran says that those who believe and those who do good deeds, they will go to heaven. And then we find that even a child who is a Muslim child. This funeral is for a Muslim. Muhammad will not attend the funeral of a Kafir. He will not pray on a kafir. He will pray on a Muslim. And this child is from the Ansar, and they are Muslims. So this child who is from a Muslim family, and even Muhammad, remember, he said that everyone is born as a Muslim, which means a child is just born, even if he is from a Christian family, according to Muhammad, is a Muslim. So why he will not go to heaven? The answer is there. Because in the stupid cult of Islam, there is no logic except one logic that they believe in destiny and Allah he wrote your fate for you where you will go regardless if you are going to do sin or not we can confirm this and make it more clear by more reference and we spoke about them before but it doesn't hurt really to uh, explore the stupidity of Islam with more details if we go to different hadith we will find let us search for the other one. All right. In this hadith here, Muhammad is giving us a one of his madness. One of his madness.
إن أحدكم يجمع في بطن أمه أربعين يوما ثم علق ثم مثل ذلك ثم يكون مضغة مثل let us read the translation the Muslim translation so the Muslims will not say I'm making things up here in this story is copying from the Quran a very well known scientific error and the Muslim tried to make it as a scientific miracle as usual this is why I advise you if you don't have my books you can go to amazon.com and search Christian Prince you will find a list of my books you choose the ones fit with your language Allah Apostle the truthful truly inspired I like it when they say the truthful and truly inspired which mean whatever you will hear here in this story and all the stories Muhammad he come with they are truthful and they are inspired by God they are truthful and they are inspired by God so watch with me he said each one of you which means there's no exception collected in the womb of his mother for 40 days 40 days as a sperm we can show you in different hadith to make it clear that this is a sperm so you are for 40 days as a semen in as a sperm and that in your mother womb which is very false because sperm don't live more than maximum you know 48 hours three days maximum some they say maybe five days but this is the maximum here we are talking about 40 days as a sperm yeah i mean you are taking like you are being a tourist as a sperm inside your mother and then you will became a dead clot for 40 days a dead clot clot here is the blood dead blood the muslim they try to say to you that the word alaqa in arabic it means like a leech that's false the leech we're talking about here is not exist this is alaqa the word alaqa in arabic is something will be attached to your skin like a leech but that is when you have a cut a dead blood will cover your wound and that is the alaqa alaqa is a dead blood so the idiot the author of the Quran believe that you are created from dead blood and that dead blood was a transformation of the sperm until now there's no egg sperm became a clot so you are 40 days as a sperm and now you are 40 days as a clot and then another 40 days as a piece of a flesh for 40 days and then Allah you see now the total is 120 days you are perfect according to Muhammad the creation of the baby is total of 120 days you are perfectly done now Allah now he sent an angel okay what this angel would do he ordered him to write four things take a note there are four things how many four huh so take a note that Allah will write four things and this is will be done when you are in the womb of your mother i.e his a provision his age and whether he will be worched or blessed in the hereafter simply everything you will do in your life including you go to heaven or you go to hell you are not born yet and Allah is programming you to go to hell if you remember the hadith where Muhammad he said which is a racist statement obviously for Muhammad is a very racist and me as an Arab I can confirm that we generally as Arab we are racist people uh, you know we discriminate black people uh, we discriminate Asian people and we think we are the best of mankind this is something we cannot hide however Muhammad as a prophet supposedly he speak not of his own he claimed that he is a prophet of God who speak what God told him so if we go we will find Muhammad saying the following hadith which we mentioned many times already but it doesn't hurt to mention it as long as we are talking about the fate this is why I want to mention it really is not because of the racism of Muhammad uh, it is about the faith 
Look what Muhammad said. Let us zoom in. Allah Messenger, Allah pray on him and salute him. When you see the Muslim saying, peace be upon him, this does not exist in Arabic. This is a lie. This is a lie. The true translation is, Allah pray on him and salute him. Because remember, Muhammad is God and Allah is his, 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 his servant. I never heard of God. He pray on the Prophet and salute him. Said, Allah created Adam when he, create, when he had created him and he struck his right shoulder and there emitted from the white of spring, from its white of spring, as it were, were white ants. So Allah, he created us from the beginning of the time, white and black. This is, was a fate and destiny. And the other fate, not only the color, is where to go. Read carefully. He struck his left shoulder and there emitted from, from it, the black of spring as it were shirko then he said to those who had been emitted which mean the white and the black from the right shoulder for paradise which mean the white ones remember who is the one from the right shoulder created those are the one who they are described as very white as white ants and who are they the one who they are from the left shoulder those are the black of spring and then allah here he decide other faith the first faith is to be black or white the second faith is connected to your color then he said from the right shoulder go to paradise and i don't care you see here it says i don't mind it doesn't say it doesn't say really it says well i don't care it's my decision that's it don't discuss with me and then he said to those who had been emitted from the left shoulder they are for hell and i don't care this is the filthy mad teaching of islam that black people are created to go to hell and they are created from the left shoulder you know many of you maybe do not notice what left shoulder mean you see in religion in religion including the bible there's the left and there is the right even in your language when you say he is right he is right what does that mean it means he's correct but right is the same word we use for right and left I mean direction right so the right hand present in religion the good hand the left hand in Islam specifically present the hand of the devil this is why Muslims are not allowed to eat with the left hand because if they do so and we can show you the hadith shaitan will eat with them a Muslim, he have to use his right hand to eat with it and his left hand to clean his ass with it because the left hand is the hand of shaitan, the hand of the devil, and it is dirty. So when Allah here, and remember, we condemn, this is a very filthy teaching. This is, don't believe in this garbage, please. Black people are not created from left shoulder of anyone. Black people are not lower than anyone. Black people, they are brothers and sisters to us, and they are the children of God, and God, He loved them as everybody. The color means nothing, but not in Islam. And here we will see how the fate of a person or even an ethnic group is decided by a stupid God who is punishing them for no sin as you see they just created from the shoulder what i mean why they will go to hell why he is making decisions saying all the black go to hell i mean all the black are bad all the, the white are good this is impossible and this is a stupid i met from black people who they are the most wonderful people ever i used to have a neighbor here he moved once i left my house and I left my garage. I, I, you know, I had the garage door to close, but maybe stuck. 
So I came back. I found him. He have a chair sitting in front of my garage. I said, "What's up?" He said, "Well, you left your garage open. I was afraid somebody would get in." I said, "Why you don't just jump? There's a you know bomb. Just hit it." He said, "I was afraid somebody would say a black person getting inside the house of a Christian prince. Look how wonderful he is. He sit as a guard to guard my house." And while was overseas, this is many years ago, a bunch of guys who they are white, and I am a white person, by the way, I'm not a black person, they broke in inside my house, stole the safe, which have nothing except pictures, degrees, etc., and they took it. There's nothing. A bunch of idiots. I have an old TV, they took it. If you put the TV in the street, nobody even will take it. So being a black and being white have nothing to do with being good or bad. There's bad everywhere. There's good everywhere. There's wonderful black people. There's wonderful white people. There's very disgusting black people. There's very disgusting white people. Somebody will cut my recording now and he will say Christian Prince was just saying there's very disgusted black people. That's what the Muslims do. So the fate in Islam is written by Allah and now we go back to our original to topic Allah he wrote your fate by a pen in his tablet then he wrote his fate your fate again when he created you that is inside you and before he write your fate inside you as we saw in the hadith the other one about the clot and the blood and the sperm he wrote your fate in the shoulder of Adam. So Islam is a religion, everything based on fate, not in logic or penalty for sin you commit. This is why if you are a person who believes in Islam, especially if you are a black person, I mean, you must be a madman to believe in such a cult. You must be a really a mad person to believe like i mean a black person should be the last one to believe in this garbage actually shame on you to believe it but i understand that the muslims they play you they try to say to you oh do you know that the 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 speech of the hujjat al-wada the prophet he said there's no difference between a black and white are you sure let us assume that that speech was right. So what is this? What about the Quran saying What about all the stories Muhammad come with? What about the, the white stone which became a black because of the sin of mankind? Which means Muhammad confirming that the black stone is not a black stone. It's a white stone and the sin of mankind made it black. The Kajit of Allah is a proving to us that Allah is a stupid God. He have a pen, he have a tablet, and he wrote on those, your fate to be black or your fate to be white. But there is something missing. I mean, what kind of God he dropped the Asian, the Indian? I mean, there's many other ethnic groups. There's, there's people, they are not, Indian and they are not really like we say Indian they are from Asia but when we say Asian you know what I mean right so where is the rest Allah only created the uh, the the the, uh, uh, the black and the white where is the Asian coming from where is the Indian coming from uh, where is the people of uh, they call them people of tomorrow like from uh, from Sawam and uh, Guam Island you know there is tons of, of ethnic groups where are they but because Muhammad, he live in a society, have two colors. The Arab are the white, and the black, who they are, the captured slaves. And Muhammad himself, he owned many black slaves. Uh, just to show you how Muhammad, even when he created his Quran, and he claimed that this is written in the Kajit of Allah. He come with a stupid mythology. 
as an example if we go in the Quran you will see Muhammad trying to copy the law of Moses the law of Moses what does that mean eye for an eye eye for an eye which means the one who killed will be killed as simple as that so Muhammad he tried to copy that law by making his own fabricated verses so look what he said let's switch to Arabic Don't forget, please, to give it, to give our video a, a like if you like what you see. This is a free education for everybody, and if you like to join us always, please don't forget to subscribe, um, so you can learn more and you can uh, be educated. This is a channel of education, not to kill time. When you join us here, is not going to be the same as before you join us. You leave from here, you are really educated. And feel free anytime to download my videos, post them in your channel. I don't I don't mind. I don't mind. But if you don't mind, please post a link so people they know where they can find a Christian Prince, which is supposed to is me, humbly. The Quran says, in the case of murder, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu kutiba alaykumul qasasu fil qatla al hurru bil hur. What does that mean? Let us see the Muslim translation. Chapter 2, verse number 178. O ye who believe the law of equality is prescribed to you in the case of murder. So this is what, guys? This is the law of equality. Justice here. This is the justice of the mad hashish boy Muhammad. This guy obviously is taken too much hashish. And look how we understand the law of law, the, the law of Moses. The free is for the free. What does that mean? If I kill a free man, you kill me. I am a free man. I kill the free man. I I die. Okay. The slave for the slave. What does that mean? If I kill your slave, you kill my slave. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, this is so good, man. I mean, now instead of having one victim, we have two. Don't acknowledge Islam, my friend. A Christian person who live in Islamic country do not need to acknowledge Islam. I don't acknowledge Islam. I live in the Middle East. People they ask me if you don't, if you want to avoid answering about Muhammad, he says, I believe in Jesus. This is my answer. That's it. The Quran confirmed that you don't acknowledge Islam. So why are the Muslims asking you to acknowledge Islam? If you acknowledge Islam, it means you are not a Muslim, no, not a Christian no more. The Quran call you Christian, don't call you Muslim. Why? Because you don't acknowledge Muhammad. So now the free for the free, the slave for the slave, and then Muhammad, he do, the, the pupu even getting bigger. He say, women for the women. Like what? So if you kill my women, I kill yours. Have you ever heard of a stupid religion more than this? And all of this is written in the tablet of Allah. Hold on. If you ask the Muslims, is that law still in practice? Anyone knows what they will say? Who knows? Is this law, the verse in the front of us, chapter 2, verse 178, is the Muslim they still practicing this? Who want to give me the answer? Anyone? What do you think? Is this law still in practice? No. Why? Question. Why? Why this law is not practiced by Muslims no more? I challenge any Muslim to give me the answer. Allah, he found that he's wrong? I mean, this is about a murder. Murder is a murder. You know what I mean? This is a murder. 
and the God who is supposed to be the God Almighty, He is being the judge and He is giving the rules. So why Allah He changed His mind? Because later He noticed that this is very stupid, <laughs> and people don't like it. Muhammad is very flexible, customer service. Always customers are right. So he made a stupid chapter and everybody start laughing and dying from laughing at this justice God. So Muhammad, as usual, he says something in the morning, he changed his mind afternoon. As an example, he says to the Muslims, you can do muta. Muta, Muslim, they practice mutas for some time. And then the people, they start saying, what kind of religion allowed in people to rent women for sex? What kind of religion this religion is? This God, he says he's against adultery, but yet he allowed his men to rent women for sex? Do you know what muta I mean? Who, who knows what muta? Muta is an Arabic word. Do you know what it means? Muta means a pleasure. It means pleasure but uh, it not necessarily means sex pleasure it's an Arabic word mean pleasure the Muslim they say that the Prophet he order in chapter 4 verse 24 to practice muta marriage they call it marriage imagine now how marriage can be muta which mean a pleasure and it is temporarily you see I don't mind that I marry a woman to enjoy her and to enjoy me for the rest of my life. Nothing wrong with that. God allowed us and want us to be one family and to be one. This is why the Bible says, when a man he marry a woman, they became one. Echad. So this is not the problem. It's not a problem to enjoy a woman you marry from. The problem is that Muhammad, he taught his followers that you can hire a woman for a day or an hour or even 15 minutes to sleep with her and yet she is considered as if she is your wife and not only that you hire her which means you have to pay her there's a conditions in the muta pleasure deal the first condition that both they have to agree about how much How much what? How much the payment? If you don't discuss with the Muslim women how much she will charge you, and both of you agree, then that is not halal. So I go to a Muslim woman, I say to her, let us say I saw a Muslim woman in the elevator. Hey Fatima, how are you doing? Hi, honey. Okay, Fatima, do you have time? What do you want? Uh, can we do muta? Oh no, you are ugly. You are disgusting. Oh, that will cost you a lot. Okay, how much? Um, you see, because you are ugly and you know. Okay, just give me that price. I mean, before the elevator arrived to the fifth floor. Okay, uh, I will charge you ten dollars. Ten dollars? Okay, nine dollars. Nine dollars? Are you kidding me? I can get a more pretty woman than you. I have my neighbor, she is just 800 pound and she is willing to give me a, a lot less price than you. Then, if you reach an agreement about the price, then we jump to the second condition, for how long? Which means it's very important to discuss for how long you are going to sleep together, you and her. So you cannot just say, I want to do muta with you and how much you charge me for sleeping with you. You have to discuss. I'm trying to find the website in, 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 uh, in English so we can read together. Let us see. All right, I found this website. Let us see. This is al, al uh, Islam uh, that uh, al uh, al Islam dot org. 
let us go there I don't know why my speakers are making noise uh, let us go here all right this is a Muslim website I'm not sure why it's making this noise this uh, maybe the cable guys do you hear anything wrong from your side I think the is talking to me this is a Muslim website called alislam.org this is not a Christian website I have nothing to do with it the four pillars of muta do you see the pillars of muta which mean the conditions what is the four pillars of muta a marriage of muta is a marriage which is the contract stipulate will last for fixed period of time this marriage of muta is referred to both in the hadith literature and in much more details in the book of etc al fiqh in the hadith actually the quran mentioned that because here he mentioned the quran too it is a temporary marriage but now let us go to the conditions of muta all right Mm, let us see here the formal how you do it how you practice the muta let me zoom in so you guys can read with me okay uh, the person so this is discussing about who is the person who can practice it etc and here the Quran says and those who guard their private parts Mm, you see how they guard their private parts the Muslims to the point you charge they will not let you park your private part there unless you pay first it's like you know private parking spot uh, the time the period mm -hmm. I'm just going over the you know you can uh, uh, you can search for the article the article is so long and you can read it by yourself if you want to go in more details as the Muslims they believe the Muslim here they call it the dawah it's not the dawah it is the cash in cash kind whether it's a cash kind or something like jewelries or whatever so you have to pay the women so the contract simply is an exchange read with me carefully guys this is the Muslim definition the contract of muta is not simply an exchange of goods but a marriage even if it is defined as a rental <laughs> rental <laughs> oh boy i am renting a woman and this is supposedly is a marriage so the muslims agree and admit that this is a contract of rental I am renting who? I am renting a female. I am renting a female for what? For sexual pleasure. This is why in the rental agreement, we have to make it clear how long I'm going to rent you, which means how long I'm going to sleep with you, how, how much I'm going to pay you, And then both of us, we have to agree and speak loud, saying, okay, the woman, she have to say, the man, he have to say, I want to ping you for three days or one day for the price of $10. And the woman, she have to repeat saying exactly what he said, and then she say, I agree, which means she have to say, okay, I allowed you to ping me for three days for such and such a price if this has happened now she is lawful for you because you did rent her
that is Islam my friend you see Islam always try to give you a, a, a different understanding like Islam is against uh, adultery Islam is a religion of adultery what Muslim try to fool you always they, they use same words you use in your language like Islam forbid adultery Islam does not forbid adultery Muhammad is the biggest adulterer he was a rapist he even sleep around and he flirt even with his own son wife and the Quran witness for that Islam promote adultery and as you see here what the point of saying to a woman you can rent your vagina for a man what kind of decency we can accomplish here what kind of a prophet the Muslim they try to present him to us that he is a person who is against fornication but the fact all what he did he legalized fornication he made it legal to the point he called renting a woman marriage you know what I mean that cannot be a religion coming from God and when you finish sleeping with this woman anyone knows what will happen read with me carefully on this point there are specified hadith as well as general hadith which state that the women who enter into Ruta is rented do you see it people do you see it I am not making things up this is not my words even the Muslims in this article you see it says number 48 you click and you will go to the reference the Muslims agree that the women she enter into the contract of muta she is rented now isn't it this is what a hooker and a prostitute is it is a woman you rent her for exchange of service and the service is sex how dare you to say to us that Islam is a religion against fornication but you have tons of rules in your religion teaching us that I can rent a woman in Islam how you can do that how in the world this is a religion of God if there is any Muslim lady in the bushes she would like to allow me to rent her tonight is a Friday and I am a single man halal how much you will charge me uh, don't worry I will not pay you from my money I will pay you from the donation guys don't forget to please to give us some donation so I can have some rented women halal you see I'm not committing sin it is halal you can rent a woman halal Allah himself allowed me to rent women what's wrong with you yet they want to fool us and they want to say that Islam is a decent religion and we protect women rights what women rights are protected here if you made them a sex toy you see when you use the needs of what what this woman she will get from this relationship anyone can tell me what exactly the the women what is exactly the women benefit of this money so obviously those women they need money and imagine guys we are talking in the year 1400 years before now women they don't have really i mean like he, he, now you can go and apply for a good decent job and you can support yourself even if you don't have a husband and maybe even you make more money than a man at that time women they have no other business either you are a wife who have a family have a husband who sponsor you or you have a father brothers who sponsor you otherwise you are dead and then you go and work as a prostitute so Muhammad here is forcing the poor girls because the one who would do that usually is the one who needs of money 
to practice prostitution, but this prostitution is legal, legal, and it is labeled as marriage. How this can be from God? How in the world Muslims can accept such a thing? Now, as long we mention that Allah He have a tablet, and we show you the proofs and the reference for that, for even from the Quran. And the Muslim Sunni, they say to us that this verse is abrogated. I challenge you to show me the abrogation. Because how you can abrogate Quran by a statement of someone you claim it was the Prophet, even though there's contradiction about who is the one who decide to stop the muta. Where is the verse that says, don't do muta no more? Don't rent women for no more? And why Allah he allow it? And here we need to ask another question. As long Allah he keep abrogating his rules, which is very stupid statement from Muslims, did he abrogate that rule in the Quran? And why we have the verse in the Quran about muta if we are not going to follow it no more? The Shia didn't agree with the Muslim Sunni. The Shia they say there's nowhere anywhere that the, the, the muta is abrogated. Nowhere. And I agree with them. Or what we have a bunch of hadith, some Muslim says that the Prophet asked someone to forbid the muta. And this is when he was dying. But Muhammad, when he was dying, he lost his mind. Muhammad, when he was dying, he is not in the position of uh, thinking straight or to make a decision. Oh, Muhammad, when he was healthy, he agreed with the muta, and when he is sick, he disagrees. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. If you remember the hadith where Aisha, she report the situation of Muhammad, that Muhammad even cannot talk. Muhammad, he cannot even talk. If we go in the hadith, we will find the following. We intended, who is the one is talking? This is Aisha, the wife of Muhammad, the child wife who became now a youth. Aisha reported, we intended to pour medicine in the mouth of Allah Messenger. Allah pray on him and salute him in his illness. But he pointed out with the gesture between two brackets of his hand that it would not be poured into his mouth against his will. So it's obvious that Muhammad in this stage, he cannot even talk. So how Muhammad forbid the muta? As you see the guy, he cannot even say a word. This is why the Shia, they accuse Aisha that she is the one with the daughter of Abu Bakr, daughter of, uh, sorry, uh, Umar, uh, uh, Aisha, uh, with the daughter of uh, 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 Umar. Both of them, they were putting poison for Muhammad and they killed him slowly. And they use this story here as a proof that she was forcing him to drink something he don't want. It might be true, it might be false, but this is not my topic for now. When Allah, he abrogated his verses about the muta, according to Muslim Sunni, 
did he send a verse to abrogate a verse remember remember Allah in the Quran supposedly he gave us how he abrogate uh, or abrogate Quran anyone remember how Allah he abrogate Quran which is a proven that any abrogation happened by hadith is false look what supposed the Allah quote unquote Allah Akka Muhammad speaking about abrogation how he do abrogation alright chapter 2 verse 1 6 translation please none of our revelation do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten but we substitute something better or similar so who is the one who will substitute somebody can tell me based on this verse who is the one who will substitute verses to abrogate previous verses who is the one who's talking here wake up wake up somebody tell me Allah that means that hadith is not accepted to substitute because the Quran confirm it must be Quran to delete the Quran and that will destroy all of Islam upside down because Muhammad he changed everything the Quran is an empty book tons of things is in the Quran Muslims don't follow no more why because they say the hadith say so but the Quran says that this is not accurate I will if I abrogate remember here read carefully what what the Quran is saying and this is why I say again and again when I read is different from somebody else reading because people don't notice the stupidity of this book usually none of our revelation so Allah is talking about what supposedly if the one is here talking is Allah if Allah is true God none of our revelation none do you see the word none which means there's no exception and the talk is about revelation do we abrogate who is going to abrogate the Quran the revelation Allah not Muhammad or cause to be forgotten we will talk about that in, in, in after that because this is very funny and very stupid because Allah he gave me Quran and yet he wanted me to forget the Quran I mean how stupid that is but anyway too much hashish but we <coughs> substitute something better or similar so it is all about we which is Allah he abrogate and he substitute so why are you are following Muhammad hadith <coughs> any Muslim can answer Do you notice how stupid this book the more we read the more it is funny and stupid by the way just to give you an idea if you like to support what we do you see my video is long however you can cut my videos into pieces like now this idea you can make a video of it you know what I mean and you can post it in your channel you can post it in Twitter you can post it in Facebook my friend our problem in this earth is our ignorance we have ignorant we are ignorant about history we are ignorant about uh, corruption we have ignorance about even news you know we believe what they say to us in the news so if you want to fight the cult of Islam because it's impacting your culture impacting your country you are not far away from Islam no more for Muslims coming to your countries by millions and they are trying their best 
to deceive your children and you don't have enough education how you can fight such a cult when you don't have education to fight it and this is for free I mean the videos is for free I'm spending hours and hours with you if you want more details you can get my books you can go to amazon.com and you can get my books from there we have a caller let us see who is calling hello hello CP yes my friend how are you doing hello yes I hear you go ahead hello CP yes I hear you hello 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 Beirut min fadlak ya inayi hello 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 CP yes I'm here my friend okay look like it's not working I advise you before you call me to say inshallah because supposedly that can fix no, no, anything no, no, no. I'm Christian actually hello do you hear me now CP yeah I can hear you now. all right see I just said inshallah you can hear me amazing it's a miracle <laughs> all right okay all right how are you doing my well, friend Hello. Um. Actually, I'm 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 an Indonesian. You know. Wonderful. I love Indonesian people. Please carry my love and my prayer to all my brothers and sisters in Indonesia. I receive a lot of emails from them, and I truly, truly love them all. And I wish one day I will be able to come to Indonesia. Thank you so much. Well, um, you know, um, um, you you told us before that um, uh, you said that we cannot uh we don't actually try to talk how to fight with islam because i believe because we are in in you know like a muslim country mm -hmm. so i believe probably they are afraid of you know try to against islam yeah what do you think about it no you see i, I believe that uh, yeah you see my friend i'm not asking mm -hmm. the christians i'm not asking the christians in indonesia to go in the street and speak against islam because this is very dangerous and because, not, yeah and not smart no i'm not uh, i'm saying when i speak to christians i mean those who they mm -hmm. are living in a free world and oh, okay, at, okay. at least you can uh -huh. do it in the internet i mean they they have uh, you live in america you live in england you live in france you live you know so yeah. mm -hmm. i'm not asking someone who live in indonesia to do that my friend Leave that for mm -hmm. me. I will do it for you. All right. I am the one who fight for you. I'm asking Christians to help me. I mean, just downloading a video and like just now and posting it somewhere it doesn't cost them any money. It doesn't cost them even nothing. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and instead of having one person, his name is a Christian prince, doing the whole fight, it mm -hmm. is wonderful to have brothers and sisters who shared the same passionate to save the Muslims mm -hmm. from the cult of Islam. Because our purpose is not to fight Muslims. Our purpose mm. is to save the Muslims from such a cult. This is a very stupid cult, and not only is going to take the Muslims to hell, as the, the Bible teach, is going to destroy the society. As you see, the Muslims are killing people left and right. But when they kill, mm. they kill themselves too. So it's a lost, lost anyway. We don't want we don't want the Muslims to die. I don't feel a happy person, I don't feel happy. If a Muslim get killed, I mean, this, this poor guy, he did what? Well, I mean, why he died? Yeah, he that's, died. that's a waste of soul. Actually. Right, it, it, it's a waste of soul. He died for no reason. Mm -hmm. He killed himself for no reason. And what he accomplished, nothing. He just He's just being a fool, believing in the false God. That this God, if he died for him, he will get him a lot of vagina, and he will get him <laughs> endless penis. And that's supposed mm -hmm. to his happiness. I mean, this guy obviously is a victim of the scam of Muhammad. So... Mm -hmm. Our purpose is not to fight Muslims, is to say to fight Islam, to fight yeah. to fight the lies. You see, our enemy is the, the liars. Yeah. Doesn't matter who they are. When somebody, you, I, I, I don't know for how long you are following my video, when somebody mm -hmm. say a lie as anything about anything, I say it's a lie. As simple as that. It doesn't matter what you are talking about. As an example, some uh, uh, they fabricate lies just to make you hate somebody. I don't like that. I don't do that. You know. Like, like mm -hmm. once, once uh, a person he told me, a uh, Christian prince, uh, the Quran says, uh, blah blah blah, in this verse about the penis. I told him, no, it doesn't say that. He said, mm -hmm. what you will lose if you say that? I said, because this is not a true. You so, know, I, I believe uh, all what you said, um, but you know, in, in Indonesia, when the, there's bomb, you know, um, the government 
told us that this is not Islam. Right, right. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I believe that's lie. You know. Yeah. I mean, um, do you think? I, I don't know. Is is it a good way to actually tell them that this is the way of Islam? You know, the violent and stuff. Yeah, you know, for me, because I, I cannot speak uh -huh. for you what to do in your country because you know the situation there, how dangerous, how risky, how safe. So you, as a person, mm. use your brain to make the right decision where you can say and what you can say. I cannot, because if I say to you, oh yeah, go and say to them, but you might be in trouble, you know? So I don't want to say, mm. I don't want you to be involved in something will risk your life and can cause you a harm to you or to your family. Be smart. However, always you mm. can argue in the right way, even in Islamic countries. Then somebody says to me that Islam, ISIS is not Islam. Okay, isn't it the prophet said, kill the Christians and the Jew, chapter 9, verse 29? That's true. That's true. I mean, you, you know, like um, there, there's actually a, um, you know, like a, a terrorist who, I mean, this guy is actually quite rich. He has money, but when he married a girl who's like a, um, you know, he has a, she, she has like a really, like a really bad influence when he when he married this girl he changed immediately i mean it's just like that it means i mean islam is really dangerous actually so um my friend, i don't know i mean my friend, islam it's, islam is crazy yeah islam yeah. islam is a dangerous religion not only for non-muslims islam is dangerous for muslims you see oh, yeah if you, if you go watch the news now you will say they will find that al-qaeda Al are killing mm -hmm. ISIS and ISIS are killing Al Qaeda, but hold on, <laughs> both of them yeah. are Sunni. Both of them they are Sunnis, and both of them they are students of Osama bin Laden. What's happening? Because the Quran teach the Muslims that it's okay mm -hmm. to kill each other if one of you is being unjust. And now mm -hmm. every Muslim group says, "Oh, they are the unjust." You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So the Quran, Muhammad, he put the rule. Of killing each other and he made them fighting uh, 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 each other and kill each other with no mercy so now we have tons of Islamic sect mm -hmm. they kill That's each true. other with no mercy and everybody use the same justification that the Quran says if you are if you are uh, uh, unjust we can kill you and uh, the Quran is teaching the truth and we are the one is just and you are the one who is unjust therefore we can kill you even if though you are a Muslim. So the Quran is a self-destruction uh, religion, you know? That's true. I mean, um, one thing, you know, I mean, um, I believe that Indonesian people, they uh, they are actually good-hearted, you know, Asian. Um, I believe if they actually know what Islam is, probably they will change, you know? Because so far, we are actually influenced by Jesus, you know, like the good things, like uh, from the movies and stuff. The movies, like sometimes they t they tell us that uh, good always wins and stuff like that. And I believe, you know, um, like uh, these cultures, you know, like um, uh, for example, like human rights. Are influence from Jesus actually. Without Jesus, we 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 we're not like this, you know. What do you think about it, my friend? If you go and study the the United Nation before it used to mm -hmm. have a different name, it used to be mm -hmm. called uh, I don't know what the name is in English, but in Arabic, you know, I have a degree in law, as you know. Uh, it's mm -hmm. called the Usbatul Umam, which means it's a it's a group of uh, Christian nations who started uh -huh. they started what it's called. Today, the United Nations. So it was based on Christian value, human mm -hmm. right. All of it mm -hmm. is coming from a Christian value. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and they try now to to uh, to forget about that, and they try to say, "Oh no, no, this is nothing to do with the Christianity. It is, uh -huh. you know, uh, the logic mm -hmm. of." Uh, uh, but the fact it is all is coming from a Christianity. However, that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> Islam is anti-human rights. Islam is anti-child right. Islam yep. is anti. Mm -hmm women rights islam is a slavery religion islam is a religion of torture you see when they say to us uh, 
that uh, ISIS are not Islam when you show them that ISIS they are crucifying people but this is what is in the Quran you know uh, mm -hmm. the Quran says uh, cut their hands and cut their cut their feet uh, and uh, crucify them uh, so how this is not Islam and this is not uh, not Muhammad if the Quran if the Quran mentioned mm -hmm. that you know mm -hmm. how, how that can be so the Quran is the one mentioning such a thing in the majaza alladina yuharibun Allah wa rasulahu wa yasuuna fil ard the punishment punishment of those who do wage war against Allah who are they based on this story a bunch of guys they converted to Islam then they killed the shepherd and they decide to leave Islam Muhammad he chased them he captured them he gagged mm. their he, he gagged their eyes with nails he did it by fire and he cut their feet and he crucified them and he let them die slowly. That is mm. a Quran. Yeah, this, is this is not ISIS verse. This is Quran. Mm. As you see here, it says, "Oh, you know, the, the, those who wage war against Allah, you know, uh, they they will be killed or crucified or have their hands and feet, uh, you know, cut it off from a, a different direction or expelled. So you can do all of those, or you can do one by by the choice of the judge of mm. the Muslim judge." So when ISIS they crucify people, they cut hands, they will be hidden. This is exactly what Muhammad was doing. Mm. Muhammad, Muhammad, he ripped a woman two part when she is alive. Her name is Ummu Qurfa, and Muslims in all their books witness for the crime he did to Ummu Qurfa. So ISIS, we saw in the video, they tie a person between two tanks and they split him two pieces. Oh, yeah. Why they are, mm. they are inspired by what? They are inspired by, by Muhammad. Muhammad. Yes, yeah. by Muhammad. Muhammad is the one, the first one who mm -hmm. split a woman two pieces when she's alive. So when when somebody says to you, ISIS is not Islam, the answer should be name for me one thing ISIS did, Muhammad did not do. Just one. And this yeah. is my challenge to I the Muslims. So. Yeah, Muhammad here. Ring. Muhammad also did that. Muhammad right? here raped, Muhammad he tortured, Muhammad he killed, Muhammad he steal. Muhammad even was accused to be stealing underwear. Muhammad he forced jizya. All of those things ISIS practice. What what you know? But because you know ISIS, because what ISIS did uh, was captured by video by them, it was shocking for the stupid world which is full of ignorance. And mm -hmm. then the, the human being will reach into denial stage, saying to himself, "This is cannot be from the religion of Islam." Because we have many people, they keep saying to us, Islam means peace. We have George Bush says that. We have Obama keeps saying that. We have the scumbag Hillary Clinton says that. We have the Prime Minister of, of uh, England says that. We have the, 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 the German Chancellor says that. I mean, everybody's saying that. So it, this is cannot be Islam. The King of Saudi Arabia is saying that. The, the, the Prince of, uh, of Dubai say that. So who is the one is telling the truth? The fact, I challenge anyone to tend to name for me. One thing ISIS did is not done right now in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. They cut hands, you know, they stoned to death, I, I, they killed gays, I think they killed lesbian, they cut the mm -hmm. hand of the, the, the of the people, and uh, you know, uh, and do beheading. So what is left? What what mm -hmm. you know what 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 ISIS did? What well, the difference is that the Saudi government they don't take a camera and they record and they make it like a movie. And then they post it in the internet so everybody do they see what they do. They don't mm -hmm. they don't they don't allow even people they, they to record. However, if you search on YouTube right now, search for be hidden in Saudi Arabia, you will see people stealing images, which means you have to hide your phone because now we have phones, right? So yeah, it's easier, it's easier to capture something because you can put uh -huh. the phone in your pocket and you claim you are not capturing anything, but the camera is running, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, like now you can find a lot of uh, uh, videos in YouTube. About uh, uh, be hidden in Saudi Arabia and cutting mm -hmm. hands. So, what ISIS did was wrong, according to Islam. This is the perfect, and every Muslim, every Muslim who is a true Muslim, believe that this is a true Islam. There is a group of Muslims who don't want such version of Islam. They want different Islam. They want Islam where I can go to the nightclub. They want Islam where I can wear a jeans. They want Islam where a woman she can wear a skirt. They want Islam where they can drink uh, vodka and whiskey. That Islam doesn't exist, but they try to create it by saying we are the one who present Islam, not ISIS. But all of us we knew 
that ISIS are the one who is following the true version of Islam and anyone else is just fabrication it's aftermarket you know I wish I, I wish that Muslims they don't really care I wish I mean this is what we wonder for you know I see but but you know I mean um I, I believe I mean like from from what I research you know I mean all what we believe now I mean like the um, minimum requirement from society I think that's that's what Jesus did actually without Jesus teachings we cannot reach this kind of social you know like um, um, tolerance what do you think about my it? my friend this is not only about tolerance Jesus is not teach you tolerance T G Jesus is teaching you love yeah. and, and love yeah. love solve problems as an example when Jesus said love mm -hmm. your enemy and imagine mm -hmm. every human being in this earth he believe in that there's nobody will kill anyone and and police will not be needed people will not be thieves because you cannot be a thief and you love the person you steal from mm -hmm. you know what I mean uh, mm -hmm. uh, nobody will rape anyone because you love people you don't want to hurt them so mm -hmm. love your enemy not love your friend all religion teach love your friend love your neighbor love your brother love your cousin yeah, Jesus, Jesus is so different Jesus yeah. did not Go with all of this he went to the far away from far anything. yeah Revolutionary. love your I enemy know. not I only mean. love them love them bless them it's bless amazing. those who curse yeah. curse you so if the whole world practice the sentence of Jesus people will not be poor hungry do you know how much every country in the world spend over security and uh, national security and Department of Defense billions trillions of dollars imagine mm -hmm. if we can spend all of this to build the schools there's mm -hmm. no child will be hungry and there's no African will be dying and there's no people will be sleeping under the bridge and there's no children will be in, in, a, in a human trafficking for sex all the problem on this earth will be solved by one sentence of Christ that's true, that's you, true. you will not need security you will not need to buy a gun you will not need the police you will not need bars for your windows you will not be need security camera you will not be uh, even worry about somebody hacking your computer because loving people loving each other that is heaven so Christ he come to us bringing heaven to us mm -hmm. and inviting us to be the people it of heaven showed us the way actually yeah to be the people of heaven you have to be qualified and the qualification mm -hmm. is to be forgiving loving and a person who don't hate and this is why Surf Islam others. Islam is losing everywhere. Islam is not winning. You know, some Muslim they try to say to you, uh, people convert. When somebody convert to Islam, they make a one thousand video for him. But how many Muslims con converting out of Islam from all Islamic countries? Nobody knows. Millions mm -hmm. people, because I know many Muslims, they are disgusted by the cult of Islam, but they don't dare even to say. But time will come, and people will have their freedom, and we see that right away uh, as we speak. You see, Africa one day used to be a Muslim continent. The majority of Af the, the biggest religion was in Africa. It was Muslims. Now the Muslims mm -hmm. in Africa is not even ten percent or eight percent. So they are shrinking. You know. So mm -hmm. what about in in uh, in Syria? What about you know? Go and see how many Muslims in are China. in China. Yeah, China is Try growing China, so much. China everywhere. I'm talking about just Muslims who live Islam. You know, Muslims. Uh, this is why I'm very thankful for ISIS, even though they are criminals, because mm -hmm. ISIS documented Islam by videos. Before we just have hadith about Muhammad cutting hands. Before yeah. we have hadith of Muhammad putting now, nails in the now eyes. Now we of have the real video. Actually, we have yeah. the real Muhammad practicing. <laughs> so ISIS gave a clear witnessing from the mouth mm. of the Muslims recorded by the muslims it's authentic it's not like something made by the kuffar movie you know it's a movie like you know terrorist whatever uh -huh. this is a movie it's just stupid it can be full of lies who care but this is something real happening for a real person in a real time and it happened now mm -hmm. and that what is important about isis they exposed islam as they say the one, real Islam, yeah, yeah. One image is better than one thousand word or a million word, you know. So uh, uh, ISIS is exactly, actually, ISIS are nicer than the Muhammad. Nicer than Muhammad. Yeah, yeah. This is true. <laughs> I saw a video made by someone who called himself moderate Muslim. 
and he was mm. accusing ISIS not to be Muslims. Imagine this is a moderate. Why, <laughs> why is accusing ISIS not to be true Muslims? Look what he said. When ISIS they enter a village or a town, it's a Christian town. Uh, the the people there they are Christian Catholic. ISIS, mm -hmm. they give them a chance to pay jizya and they did not slaughter them. The guy mm -hmm. who made the video, who is a moderate Muslim, he said, if ISIS are true Muslims, then they should kill them all. Mm. Why? Because he said those are Catholic and in their church, they have an idol. They have a status of Mary. Therefore, those are not a valid Christians to give them protection if they pay money, which means they will not kill them if they pay us money. So we protect them from ourselves. Therefore, we should kill them all. So this is the moderate Muslim. ISIS mm -hmm. did not do it. The moderate Muslim, he want to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, when um, have you heard about Aho, you know, in Indonesia, the the uh, Christian um, governor? Yeah I, I, yeah, I heard. Yeah, they did. They, they make it an excuse to take him down and take him to jail. You know. Uh, yeah. Th this I is, mean, um, th there was there was like a comment, you know, um, like from from a, a female Muslim. She said, "I mean, if Muslim is like that, I mean, like try to become like a mafia, you know. She she doesn't like that. I mean, she she wants to." she wants to change the religion you know i i believe uh people people have like a good heart you know i mean if they actually know what islam is i believe they can change you know right they will change the religion yeah people, because it's against pe the, people, the heart people of, change of by the way people anti. people change you know people they like you know you, you know the story of Paul right Paul he used to be anti christians and he want to kill them he hated yeah, them that's true. so yeah, yeah, yeah. from from somebody going after the christians to kill them to someone he is uh, you know uh, a big figure in christianity so mm -hmm. yes people they change and this is why we don't want anyone to hate anyone as a muslim those are victims they need our help they need our uh, uh, you know uh, to explain to them to show them that why we are christians and why islam is wrong but we do it with love and mercy, not with hatred and not with violence. And we don't want to kill any Muslim. We don't want any Muslim to get hurt. And me as a Christian, if I see a Muslim get hurt, I feel sad. I feel mm -hmm. really sad. Not this is this is the difference between Islam and Christianity. When when uh, when tsunami happened, and you are from mm -hmm. Indonesia, I was mm -hmm. in the program. It's called Pal Talk. The Muslims in Pal Talk in this chat program, the open chat. Rooms, yeah, I, I heard what you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they were like Cele celebrating, like happy, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. They open Allah. The, the chat of the like the name of the room, as I remember, like something like this, like uh, Allah, uh -huh. he Allah, uh, Allah he punished Allah. Allah he punished the kuffar by tsunami, and the Muslim mm -hmm. praising Allah. He killed the infidels because they heard that many people die in Thailand. Blah blah blah. But then but the news, in Indonesia, Sumatra, yeah. yeah, yeah they, but then the news came. The news <laughs> yeah. came that the, the majority of those people who get into the tsunami are Muslims. Even mm -hmm. even the Muslims, they posted Photoshop. Imagine how fast they are. They mm -hmm. uh, uh, they 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 posted Photoshop, uh, stating that tsunami have the name of Allah in it, and he killed the kuffar as a punishment for not believing in him. So mm -hmm. the only religion. Uh, who celebrate death is Islam. It's Islam, yeah. Why? Because Islam is a false religion. Why mm. in the world anyone will celebrate the death of people playing in the beach from any religion? They can be atheists, they can be Hindus, they can be Christians, they can be Muslims. Why in the world, how ugly are you to celebrate the death of families but tens of thousands of them die and they are going for a vacation. What kind of a human being you are? What this religion made out of you to celebrate death of anyone? Mm -hmm. That must be a devilish. This is, must be satanic religion. People should be feeling for the suffering of each other. I today I opened the, the you know I saw the news that says there's a there's an airplane uh, fell down in Cuba. Uh, Boeing and the right away after leaving the airport. I feel sad. I don't know anyone in the airplane mm -hmm. I have no I don't know anyone from Cuba. We have compassion, but me as yeah. a human I feel sad for people I mean those are they have families uh, How mm -hmm. many people today they are crying for this? So 
you as a human God he gave you your humanity mm -hmm. Islam strip you from your human yeah strip mm -hmm. you from your love make you a person who believe in hate celebrating death mm -hmm. and this is a very clear proof and reason to believe that Islam is a very bad ugly cult but I mean in Indonesia they they try to you know portray Islam as a good religion but I mean, my, you see, you see, this, this in, lie actually, right? In Islamic countries, my friend, there is a struggle between Muslim themselves. So mm -hmm. there is Muslims who don't want to be the same as ISIS, mm -hmm. and they are trying to present Islam in different way, because mm -hmm. they have no choice. You see, if you are now in a in a Muslim, in a Muslim from Indonesia, and you don't mm -hmm. believe in ISIS practice, why you don't believe in ISIS practice? Because you believe. That this is doesn't fit for today, but if you are honest, you know that this is what the Quran is saying. So there is a struggle inside the Islamic society. Should we be as Muhammad, or should we yeah. should we should we be uh, uh, Muslims 2018? So the struggle yeah. right now is between yeah. those two Muslims. This is why you see the Muslims attacking Muslims in Indonesia too. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. They attack the police station. Mm -hmm. Right? I, I, I two, a few days ago. I heard that there's four Muslims they attack a police yeah. station and they have swords in their hand imagine how stupid they are so mm. it's a brainwashed mm. and they, they think they can be victorious by a sword because Muhammad he carry a sword so now the policeman who is a Muslim why he's going to be killed for he don't believe in what they believe and that make him a kafir you know um, the, uh, the police I mean like the head police on Indonesian I mean, he he talked in a talk show. He told us, I mean, uh, those guys actually want a highway to heaven, you know. And they, um, he he told us, actually, um, what we need to do is try not to um, confront them so much. I mean. Um, yeah, but, because, this is, but this is not a solution. It, you see, there's. The, I know what he's saying. The solution for this is to change the education in Indonesia in schools, and mm -hmm. to to to. Uh, uh, you want to promote Islam in different way. This is your business as a, as a Muslim mm -hmm. from Indonesia or a government. But, but that's the, a lie, right? But, but they have to understand that the problem really is in the religion, not in the mind of those people. So in order mm -hmm. to fix this problem. You have to make those people free from this religion. Otherwise, you are just wasting your time. They are there is there is Indonesian don't care for what to be a true Muslims, but the true Muslim he care to be true Muslim and he want to kill. So now you have a struggle between two kinds of Muslims: a Muslim who want to be a Muslim by name, and a Muslim mm -hmm. who want to follow the Quran. The Quran says, chapter forty nine, verse number nine, that if there is two groups of who fought, fought, fought about what. Quran described them that the one, one of them is being unjust. So for those who they attack the police station, killing the policemen, mm -hmm. they believe mm -hmm. that those are Muslims, but they are unjust, which means they are transgressing against Allah. So it's halal to kill them. Uh, halal to kill them. Oh, so see. we have a struggle inside the society, and this is why Islam is a self-destruction religion. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So Muslims now are fighting Muslims. You are not fighting the Muslim. You are fighting Islam alone. You are fight, uh, the Muslims are fighting Islam with you. We have we have to consider that. Now, the 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 ones you are talking about, they try to present Islam in a good way. They are just mm -hmm. trying to use propaganda to fight the other kind of Muslims. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They are trying mm -hmm. to make other Muslims believe with them, join us in this belief that Islam is against killing. Now, the ones who don't like killing, they will like this idea. Not because it's a true idea, but because they like it. You know what I mean? I, be, I believe. I believe that's because I. I believe that's because the international way. I believe that's that's normal way, and that's because of Jesus. Yeah, but we are you talking about I mean? about the local uh -huh. issue. You see, we're talking about the, the Islamic society. If you go right now to uh, to Dubai, as an example, in mm -hmm. Dubai, if you are ISIS, will be arrested immediately. Okay. But they are Muslims, so why they are not cutting hands and cutting heads, etc.? Because there is a there is a struggle inside the Islamic society. 
Oh, you know, I mean, in Indonesia, they they actually um, they actually worship sometimes. They actually like um, Western cultures. You know, I believe that's because of the movies and right, stuff. Right, right. The influence, the influence of uh, of uh, other, you know, of the West. You yeah. know, I mean, um, like. You know, like the movies in the West. I mean, the good guys always. You know, win when I was when I was like in that. university, when mm -hmm. I was in university, I was in England. There was mm -hmm. there was an, a niece of uh, what his name, uh, Soharto, I think. Is that his name? Soharto. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. This his mm -hmm. his niece. You know, mm -hmm. in the graduation, they have a party in the boat. The university rent a boat, and mm -hmm. we are you know we were student all of us. So mm -hmm. this uh, this girl. She, uh, they, they start talking about tattoo, and she mm -hmm. said that she have a tattoo, okay. Mm -hmm. And one of the guys mm -hmm. he said, "Show us the tattoo." Now, so hard or supposed is a Muslim guy, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she is supposedly, you know, she have picture of her fam family. They are wearing hijab, and then mm -hmm. she have the tattoo over her ass. She took off her pant in front of everybody. <laughs> you know? Okay. This is yeah, this is this is where me, this is where is the tattoo located. So mm -hmm. obviously in Indonesia, there's people who they have they are far away from living a good mm -hmm. life too. I mean, this is not right. And you know, mm -hmm. we, we don't want to follow any culture that does not fit with our culture. You as an Indonesian, you have your tradition. I advise mm -hmm. you not to follow the Western because the, who said that the Western are doing the right thing? This is not the right way. Who said mm -hmm. who said that living like some because some like Western movies don't even present really mm -hmm. the true Western, mm -hmm. you see. Not if you go to America, you go to church mm -hmm. Sunday, churches are full, it's a flooded, you can't even find a place to park your car. So, what we see mm -hmm. in that in the in the movies are not true. I, I remember, mm -hmm. you know, uh, after I immigrated to USA, I speak on the phone, they say to me, Do you see shooting in the street? I say, What shooting? It's because this is what they oh, this is see. what they see in mm -hmm. the movies. Then the movies they see Trumbo shooting everybody in the street, cars going on top of each other. You know, I said, I never until now, I never saw a shooting. But if there is a shooting you say yes it's the same as any country in the world it might happen there's a criminals there's crazy people it can happen mm -hmm. but it is mm -hmm. a very nice country and it's peaceful i never saw somebody shooting somebody ever in usa so it might happen in front of your eyes it might happen there's a criminals there's bad people but movies are wrong influence they mm -hmm. you know you as an indonesian i advise my my brothers and sisters in christ in indonesia not to take the Western movies as a tradition to follow. It is a wrong tradition. We have a better tradition to follow. That is the teaching of Christ. It's more than tradition. It is right. It's based on love. It's based on family. It's based on what is right and what's wrong. So for me, if I am an Indonesian or I'm an Arab, I'm not going to follow somebody because his uh, civilization looks shiny, uh, high tech. Etc. Mm -hmm. I will not mm -hmm. do that because that would be stupid. I need to follow. If the Western provide me with something better than my tradition, I will take it. But if they try to provide me something bad, I will reject it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I understand that. But you know, the problem is, I mean, uh, those who actually reject the Western cultures are actually the you know hardcore Muslims. I mean the the normal Muslims they don't actually care and they they like to listen right. to Western actually, move, even, um, my friend, music and stuff. Even even the Muslim terrorists they love the the Western culture. You see what? Oh, okay. Oh yeah, all of them. You know, I, the the one who did 9/11 the day before they were they were in Strapiza Club, which is not the Western country the culture by the way. But here here there's a freedom. There's trust. Uh, I, I I live in America. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't want to say for how many years. But I spent long, long time. I don't know how old are you, but I spent long time. I never been all my life in anywhere close to strip teaser club. But those are coming to do jihad, but yet they do to strip teaser club. <laughs> I see. Yeah, Muslims they drink alcohol more than anyone. Muslims mm -hmm. they you know they are they, uh, 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 in the in the New Year evening in uh, in Germany two years ago. Uh, uh, 1,000, 2,000 case of rape in one city. Most of it is. Oh done, yeah, 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 you know? yeah. So and, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. why people who they are religious they are raping? You know, I mean this. Why, mm. why a why a person who is religious in Saudi Arabia, he don't trust mm. his sister to walk in the street alone if he live in a religious country. Mm -hmm. Because the country, well, 
yeah, it's because not, Islam is, is false. Because Islam does not present a good ethic. Mm -hmm. It is, you know, Islam is like a, a, a grave covered by nice marble from outside. But mm -hmm. from inside, but inside there is no yeah. light, you know. It is so we speak too much about we are against adultery, we cover women because of women they are decent, but the fact it is totally the opposite. Under the table, everything is done. Number one buyers for virgin again product from China is Muslims. Mm -hmm. Why they want to buy it? Because women they go sleep around and now they are going to get married. Now she needs to fool that new husband. Who do who will believe that she is the Virgin Mary? <laughs> so she I buy see. the Virgin again product, she put it there, and then when he is having sex with her, she acts like she is having a pain, and then he will see blood is coming, and bingo, she is a virgin, he's happy, everybody's happy. But the fact is, women she have a lot of experience. She so, was, yeah, she was so, not a virgin, no? yeah. You know, I, I don't I don't want to show like if you go in the screen, uh, I, I will type the word in Arabic so people they can go and search for it. If if we if we go just type the word ma'laya in Arabic, ma'laya. I will type it in the screen. People they can copy it. I don't know if it's going to appear correctly. If you type the word ma'laya, 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 mm -hmm. in Arabic, I post it in the chat. You can check it out. Just copy it and post it in YouTube. You will find endless videos of Muslim women wearing hijab, shaking their booties. Mm -hmm. Okay, how they are religious. And not only that, they are shaking their booty and they are praying a song says Allah, 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 Allah. I mean, do you see how religious they are? They are shaking their booty with the name of Allah. And everybody is wearing hijab. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You, you know, I, I think, you know, the, the problem with the Western, I, I believe that's because of the, um, the atheists, I believe, because they try so much you know so long to yeah. try to my friend, you know, my friend. demonize let christians us, let us make it simple the ignorance mm -hmm. is the problem anywhere in the west mm. or anywhere if i am ignorant anyone can fool me an atheist he cannot fool me unless i am an ignorant a muslim mm -hmm. cannot fool me unless i am an ignorant even a christian he can fool you because not all yeah, yeah, yeah. not all the christians true, are yeah. good people there is a christian by name they are false they are liars they can fool mm -hmm. you if you are ignorant so you have to fight your ignorance in order mm -hmm. to live a good life it doesn't mm -hmm. matter who you are you are a muslim you are a christian you are a hindu you are a buddha you are an atheist you have to fight your ignorance the bible says my nation been destroyed because of their ignorance ignorance is the problem people they are suffering because of it why people take drugs because they are ignorant why people they smoke i mean why you smoke it's a sign but of how, ignorance. How, how can we actually try to make Muslims not to be ignorant? Here we go. I'm you know, because I'm, they were friend, trained to you, be ignorant. You, you are, know, to you be are, brain dead. You are asking me what to do, and I am doing it as I'm speaking with you now. This is what we do, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, my mm -hmm. friend, I, 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 we got to go. We don't have much time left. I want to say see, thank you. Thank you. Thank for you calling. so much for 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 accepting my calling. You are welcome, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. God bless you. Take care. Take care. God bless you. Bye bye. God bless Goodbye. You. Bye bye. Always, people from Indonesia, you are welcome to call me anytime. I really love talking to you. I, uh, you know, uh, it's an honor for me to speak to Christians from around the world. It makes me happy. It makes me feel really special because, you know, you just told me, you know, when I speak to you, that my voice is reaching out to the end of the earth that is a very beautiful and good news may the lord bless you all uh, uh, i have a special love for those who they are discriminated for they are better christians than we are christians who they live in countries and they are discriminated they are better christians than, 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 than me and you for they after all the discrimination, they choose to be Christians. That's amazing. That will make them, if you are an iron, they are the steel. If you are the silver, they are the gold. For they are the rear between others. They are the few, but yet they are the blessed one. 
so this is why I love those people in Pakistan Christians they suffer a lot I love them their suffering make them better Christians amazing Christians always always try to learn from those who they are under discrimination and see how much they have love and how much they are happy to be Christian they might be discriminated yes they might but still they stay Christians amazing I mean after all of this especially in a country like Pakistan unbelievable how much they discriminate the Christians they even burn them alive yet they stay Christians I don't know how many of us would stay Christians if somebody come and he put a knife in our neck those already those people already they prove that they are the real thing and that's why we love them uh, All right, uh, call you want to call me? Okay, go ahead, my friend. Uh, we don't have much time left, but we can call. All right. <clears throat> Hello. 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 Yes. How are you doing, my friend? I'm CP. How about yourself? I'm all right. Hard to catch up with you. I know it's hard to catch up with myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, your, your broadcast schedule kind of over overlaps my work for a bit. So by the time I'm free enough to actually call in, it's it's late, in late for you in your broadcast, because uh, you've been on now for what, uh, about three hours almost. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. In in any event, um, what I wanted to ask about, I guess it's a a bit of a heavy topic. Well, I'll go ahead and, and just get to it. If you have time to deal with it, then that's fine. And if not, then we'll deal with it next time. Um, look at the debate online. Um, they were debating debating the oneness of Allah. It was actually Hatun over in Speaker's Corner and some other guy. Um, I don't remember his name. It was a short black guy. He was he was kind of shotgunning versus you know Zach and I style. Saying a bunch of verses, you know, with no regards to the context and things like that. But what made what made it stand out to me, and what makes me bring it up to you, um, I thought about it that I would have actually taken that a different direction. Um, the argument was over the oneness of Allah. Okay, well, the God and. When I heard it, I thought, I guess, really for the first time, I would have actually approached that from the Quran. Okay. And I wanted to run my ideas by you and, you know, well, see if they hold up in, in your opinion. Okay. You still there? Yes. Yeah, for some reason, your voice is coming and going, and there's like a bomb behind you. I don't know what's happening. Okay. I, I don't hear anything. Uh, do the people am I let, clear to the let, people in the chat? Me, let me call you back again because I don't know what's wrong. Let me call you back. Hold on. <laughs> All right, go ahead and tell me again what you were saying. There's, hello? There's a bad noise. I don't know what is that. Why you have a bad noise? Hello? Hey CP, how yeah, are you? Go ahead. What you were saying? 
Uh, did you hear any of what I was saying? A little, uh, you know, the video, it was coming and going. Uh, for, I don't know why, uh, you know, it's just uh, again, please. Is it clearer this time? Yeah, I hear you now. Go ahead. I don't know. Did you, did you guys hear this? It's like suddenly, it's like, you know, like a faucet open and like a bomb. Yeah, it kind of comes and goes. Hello? Yeah, I don't know what is that. It's weird. Mm hmm. You know, <laughs> did, you, did you say inshallah before you call me? No, uh, you see? yeah, I can't hear it. Uh, okay. CP, yeah, I'll tell you uh, what. Hold on, hold on. Uh, give me give me the question in the text, can you give me the question in the text because it's really annoying. It's like boof, suddenly, uh, uh, you know, it's really bad. Or maybe you can call me tomorrow, it's okay. We can leave this question for tomorrow, not a big deal. Anyway, you know, for me, it's uh, my time is up already. You know, I did not really have my uh, my lunch yet, and uh, I don't have uh, dinner, which is one meal I eat. Uh, what is the difference between ideology of Al Qaeda and ISIS? There's no difference. It's the same. The difference is about who is going to take over. They are not fighting because they have different ideology. They are fighting over power. Who want to take over? You know, bunch of criminals, the same as Muhammad. Uh, they are fighting who is going to be the leader, who is going to collect more money, who is going to make more money. You know, that's the whole story, right? He talk about Islam and he do not know the difference between what noon and verb. Yeah, you, you know, look who is talking. A guy who did not know between the different, but the difference between a spirit and a physical god, and he was worshiping a spirit god all his life. Which means this donkey did not know even he is worshiping who, and he's talking about a verb and a noun. Look who is talking. He is a prophet himself. Do not know how to write, how to read, and he himself is not even an Arab who do not know how to read Arabic correctly. And guys, isn't it this guy? Isn't it this guy? Who said to us, you remember what we were talking about? As long as he's here, just, just for love at the end. What was the word he was insisting that the hadith was saying, the one who was teaching me Arabic? You remember? He said the word the asiletahu, asiletahu, does not mean juice, correct? Did he say that? And he gave us, as you remember, he gave us a website to go and see the meaning there. Hold on, let me go there. I will show you from what he gave us how stupid this guy when he speak about Arabic he do not know he do not know how stupid he is as usual I'm not insulting I will show it to you hold on let me let me open the Islamic dictionary which he is the one who provides the link be my witness actually it's he posted in the in, in the video himself but let me go here and go to Al Ma'ani all right Okay. Let us go to the website he gave us. This is the website he gave us. Uh, Nightmare is that the, is is that the same website? It's the same, right? So you don't you cannot play games and you say no, it's not. Ah, let us get you busted, Abdul. The same as we get your prophet busted uh, always. So here. Let us see. This guy, he called me, trying to supposedly his best to correct me in Arabic, claiming that I don't speak good Arabic. And he said, Asiletahu does not mean juice. Asiletahu means sperm, mean orgasm. Let's switch to Arabic. Hmm. Guys, do you see it? This this donkey, uh, sorry, commercial. This donkey, and I announced him to be donkey officially. He claimed that we don't speak good Arabic, and he is just a Moroccan boy who do not know how to say his prophet name correctly. He is the one who gave us this website, and he is the one who is asking me to go and read it from there. And he is the one who called me to argue with me that I did lie when I said that the word Asila mean the juice of the man. This is what Asila mean. 
orgasm. You are the most funny, dummy, stupid Moroccan ever I met. I mean, Moroccan, there is a lot of smart people there, but you are officially certified stupid. You know what certified? Certified. This is the website you gave me. You call me, you spend 20 minutes calling me names, donkeys, stupid, liar. And then when I showed you what the dictionary, which you gave me yourself, saying you hang up, you liar. Because you are a donkey. And actually, I am afraid that donkeys will hear me and they will sue me. And they will say this is not fair. We are not the same as nightmare. Donkeys are smart people. I don't want to call you. You are just a donkey. I wasted my time with you. Is it in front of you or not? Asila, huh? it's orgasm. Go and have the 70 years orgasm, which your prophet he offer you. You are expired ticket for me. I did spank you. What is enough for the coming 20 years? I have videos of you being exposed for the coming 20 years. Why I want to waste my time with you? I need something new. How many times you've been spanked? What do you mean, liar? It's in the front of you. Aren't you the one who said that Asila does not mean Jews? Aren't you the one who said to me I am lying? Huh? It's mean orgasm. It's in the front of your eyes. Orgasm. And the prophet, he said, taste her... Okay, hold on, guys. This guy is forcing me to call him. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah, look like he is uh, seeking some spanking before he sleep. It's Friday night. I mean, what we can do? Customers come first. Hold on. Let me call you. <clears throat> uh, where is your name? Here we go. Answer, Abdul. Answer. He misses spanking. What we can say? The more you spank him, the more he asks for more. Why are you not answering? Abdul, why you don't answer? Let me call you again. <clears throat> are you online or not? So you are asking me to call you, but it says uh, 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 Abdul al Mastul is not online. What I will do with you now? How I'm going to call you if you are offline? Come online, man. Hello, guys. Let me put it on. Let me put it in the front of you, just to show you. This potato, he is saying to me, call me, and then we call him, he is not there. Here we go. Does it say Amro so so is not online? So why you are asking me to call you? Let us do it again. I hear a call, but I don't see a caller. I don't see anything. Where is the caller? I don't see anything on my screen. Hold on. How this can happen? I don't know. Is that, is that sound stuck? <laughs> I see nothing in my screen. Hold on, hold on. Let, let me let me exit Skype and come back. Look like this is the sound is stuck here. Let us see. Look like there's a problem. Okay, let me call you.
Answer. Come on, Abdul. I don't have time for this garbage. You're just a kid. Get lost. Just get lost. Hey, Abdul, what's up? Abdul, do you hear me? Yes, let me call. Uh, you always have to let me call you. You got problems. All right, all right. What what Asila mean? What what Asila? What Asila mean? You said Asila does not mean juice. <clears throat> yes or no? Okay, okay. Well, let me uh, just one minute. Let me. Uh, I can hear. What is this noise I hear? This is the uh, Jibril. Okay. This is Jibril. No, don't change the topic. You said that the word Asila added okay. law. Asila does not mean the juice of the man, correct? First, you have to learn how to pronounce First, the word. Uh, you pronounce the word incorrectly. Really? Okay? What is the correct uh, pronunciation? Tell me, please. Is Usaila, not ah, Asila. It is Usaila. How is Usaila doing? Usayla. So yes. your prophet you was see, saying Asila. Yeah, yeah, you, so you're the one who doesn't know Arabic. Okay, hold okay. on, hold on. Let me show you. I, now you okay, to hold, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on, 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 uh, Abdul. You see, you call me to spank you in purpose. I don't know why. This is the hadith in the front of us in Arabic. I want you to read it. What is the hadith saying? And translate, please. I don't see no hadith there. It's in the front of you, and this is the hadith in English. What it says? I can, I can, I can find, I found the hadith. No problem. Salat what it says? What the hadith says? Just to, Salat just to remind, Ali, just, Ali, just to remind, Ali, just to remind Ali, the people. Ali. Okay, okay, okay. What, what your prophet said? She tastes his juice, and he tastes her juice. Correct or no? No, no, there is no word juice. Okay, Usaila. Did you, Usaila did, is not did, juice. Okay, did you give me what what Usaila mean? Usaila, I tell you, Usaila is a sexual pleasure. Who says so? The, the expert. Is that the dictionary you gave me yourself? No, I, no, I never give you a lot. You see, no, you, you put I, words I in can, my mouth. I Abdul, never, Abdul, I never told you Abdul, 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 I can I go right now. I can go right I, now. I, Shut up. I, Shut up, son of Muta. What if I go right now to YouTube page and I show that you post for me the website? What you would do? You take a challenge? Yes or no? I post WhatsApp. Did, but, 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 did, you, did, you, post, did you post for me this website? Yes or no? Yes or no? Did you post this website? Yes or no? Al Maani dot com. Yes or no? It doesn't matter. Did you post? Did you post for me? Shut up, Abdul coward! You call me to spank you, and I will not let you go to sleep unless I spank you. Answer: Did you give me Al Maani dot com, and you post it in YouTube for me to prove me wrong? Yes or no? Look for this word. Did you? Did you? Yes. So you asked me to go there to search for the word. So you accept whatever they're saying. Yes or no? No, I did not. Then not, shut up, coward! Don't call me again. Not you are just it. a kid. You are just a kid, son of Muta, a filthy idiot. Now you don't accept them. So why you give me the website? You see, guys, why I call them cowards? So why you are calling me to call me names? This is the dictionary. You are the one who gave it to me to prove me wrong. The dictionary says the word asila is orgasm. Orgasm. So she have to taste his orgasm. How a woman she can taste the orgasm of the man? And what is the orgasm of the man? And he have to taste her orgasm. What is the orgasm of the woman and how he can taste it? You are a, um, unbelievable. How silly, stupid you are. You call us in purpose to get yourself busted. No, I did not give you. I gave it to you to prove other words. So other words, it was correct. This word was wrong. So you see, guys, how, how, how hypocrite they are? They are the one who gave me this website to prove me wrong, supposedly. But the stupid idiot, he don't even know how to, pro to pronounce the word correctly. This is why he got the wrong meaning, wrong word. And now we have the word in the front of him, the correct one. It says orgasm. Orgasm. 
the prophet saying to a man you cannot remarry sorry she cannot remarry her previous husband unless she tastes your orgasm and you taste her orgasm and now he just admitted you see before he was saying it is uh, you know metaphorical what metaphorical orgasm is orgasm it's not metaphorical and taste is taste it's not metaphorical and here they are spoken about what about doing the f thing literally not metaphorical so what your prophet saying clearly that both of you you have to have sex and have orgasm from that sex and each one of you taste the other one orgasm this is the condition in front of us the muslim in their translation they try to cover the ass of muhammad by saying oh it says to taste her sweetness and she tastes his sweetness suppose they make it look nicer but if we take the word as it is the one the muslim translated as a sweetness it does not come as anything except orgasm so the filthy muhammad he made a condition in islam that a woman she cannot remarry her previous husband unless she go and sleep around with a donkey and he f her and then in order she go to go back to the previous husband as you see here muhammad is speaking to the woman you want to go to the previous husband listen carefully you cannot do that unless until the second one taste your orgasm and she taste his orgasm what kind of a filthy garbage cult this cult is and you will notice here how corrupt those people the same website they tried to prove me wrong from it now it's not bad no more just because the website get them busted the same exact website even he denied he said no i did not give it to you and when i said to him what if i go right now with challenge to you and we show the youtube page where you posted that for me actually i can do that right now it's going to take me some time to find it because i don't remember which uh, which video it was that was a while ago muslims my friend are in denial and islam is a painful religion for them this is why they try their best to defend the faith of their prophet what kind of a prophet he makes such a rule and by the way this is in the quran the quran says that a woman she is divorced she cannot get back to her previous husband unless she if and the hadith confirmed that and even he himself confirmed that because he said the word is the sexual thing so until what until she if you believe it this is god if he divorce her the muslim translation which is a false translation the women she cannot be lawful to her previous husband until she if not to marry and he just confirmed that he just said that the word who mean sex sexual intercourse so look at the muslim translation a nightmare he helped us to get them busted until she had sexual intercourse not until she married because how she will marry the new husband he is already a husband in this hadith here in front of us this woman she is already married already she is married so what do you mean until she marry a new husband she is married he is saying to her you cannot go back to the husband until you do orgasm with this man and he tastes your orgasm and you taste his orgasm and by his help we confirm that the Quran translation is false and the Muslims trying to cover the shame and the filthy cult of Islam what is the wisdom of a woman 
her husband divorce her she cannot get back to her previous husband until she if a new husband and then he tastes her orgasm what a filthy disgusting cult is that what do you want to your daughter nightmare her husband divorce her three times then we need to find her somebody to f her and then he tastes her orgasm and she tastes his orgasm and now she is a qualified to go back to the previous husband what a filthy disgusting cult and this is how we do it anyway guys it's getting late for me i am really hungry i did not even make any food yet so mostly i'm going to make some spaghetti and i wish i can invite you all to eat with me but thanks god i cannot <laughs> because imagine then how much food i need to make i want to say thank you guys for being here tomorrow i will be here around 4 30 as usual unless there is something urgent and i could not come so tomorrow uh we will be here again at 4 30 and we can give nightmare another spanking he can call me too tomorrow we can laugh uh Please invite your friends, tell your friends, especially the Muslims, especially from Morocco, they're fun. Uh, because as you see, they think that orgasm is something can be tasted, as you just heard. <laughs> this is their favorite drink. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And enter, we see you tomorrow again. We remind you that under this sun and above in heaven there is no better name than his holy name the holy name of god will not teach such a garbage will not teach that a man he can rent a woman as we show we showed you in a muslim website that a woman she is rented this is a garbage satanic demonic religion women are not for rent this is a disrespect for your mother for your daughter for your sister for your wife this is a satanic cult make women sex toys and this is cannot be from god god is not a pimp but that is who is allah and this is his pimp muhammad trying to sell us out a sexual religion everything in it based on sex heaven is a pimp house heaven full of long penises big asses long line of women their legs is open for you thousands and thousands of them and all of them they look the same which make it even more stupid and more foolish women in earth they became sex toys for rent as you see in the front of your eyes and this is not my website and this is not me saying that this is your Islamic stupid teaching, alislam.org. Garbage in, garbage out. And this is exactly what Islam is about. May the Lord bless you all. And until I see you again tomorrow around 4.30, take care, enjoy your weekend. Christ is Lord, Islam is false. Let me do that and see you soon again. Bye-bye.